Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. There are two dimensions. You may want to write it down again. There are two dimensions to kingdom advancement. Every time we talk about the advancement of God's kingdom, it is first and foremost important for every and any believer to be interested in this subject. If you are not interested in the concept and the whole idea of kingdom advancement, then it means you do not love God and you're not a contributor. To the building of his kingdom kingdom advancement generally speaking refers to before i give you the dimensions um, it refers to any listen and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed to establish the lordship of christ listen please any and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed right to establish the lordship of christ first across the hearts of men or in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities any and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed like an arsenal to the end that the lordship of christ be established in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities that's the definition of kingdom advancement so we say we are advancing the kingdom to the degree to which we are making use of every scriptural arsenal it must be scriptural to advance the frontiers of the kingdom by this definition it suggests that there are two dimensions to kingdom advancement number one is establishing the lordship of the christ in the hearts of men this is very important you will want to write that the first dimension to kingdom advancement is the establishment of the Lordship of Jesus Christ in the hearts of men. And then the second dimension is taking the culture, the principles and the ideologies of the kingdom and using them to transform society. So the first dimension has to do with a spiritual reality establishing the lordship of the Christ in the hearts of men. And then the second dimension has to do with communicating his ideology across every strata of human activities. It's important you know this. The first dimension of kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of Christ um, in the hearts of men will require what we know to be evangelism and discipleship i'm just doing a recap we have taught this the whole idea of what we know to be evangelism and discipleship they are the structures that were designed by god to bring men to bring the establishment of the lordship of christ across the hearts of men um, there are all kinds of versions and understandings about discipleship and about evangelism and this is not in any way attempting to interpret it in the religious way that we know because for many people when we talk about evangelism or discipleship the concept has been so abused it's like an indoctrination into a denomination and their tenets that's not necessarily God's idea of discipleship evangelism and discipleship is the scriptural pathway to establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men then the second dimension taking the influence of the kingdom his culture his ideology permeating society when we are able to successfully do these two things then it can be said that the kingdom of god is advancing within a territory or in a dispensation my concern this evening this night is um, the establishment of the lordship of christ in the hearts of men i want to just zoom it a little there and um, help us to be very effective
effective at doing this by god's grace i think that we understand the concept of influence and how to take the the light and the power and the culture of jesus christ across territories we've spoken about different mountains and how that we need to establish the value system of the kingdom but i think that many people do not know how to establish the lordship of christ across the hearts of men so i want us to look at a few things that i believe will be very very important daniel chapter 12 please verse 3 daniel chapter 12 verse 3 media we have a lot of scriptures today so please you'll be ready for that um this will be more of a study tonight i just want us to pray later on but um i really want us to have understanding i like us to read together is projected as loud as you can one to read and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament uh-huh and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars so there is such a state where a man can turn many to righteousness it says they that be wise they shall be as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many not few in god's mind he desires that every believer would participate listen in this dimension of kingdom advancement as far as the establishment of the lordship of christ in the hearts of men is concerned largely we have left this ministry to evangelists we have left this ministry to those we call the fivefold they are the only ones who make the altar calls they are the ones who print tracts they are the ones who do all of these things and then for those who even engage in what we know to be evangelical activities they largely do not do it with understanding they just do it um in honor of a a a, a suggestion or a program by the church or some kind of structure that makes them feel spiritual you see the thing about the kingdom is anything you are doing that is not out of understanding you will not be blessed from it understanding is very important understanding is very important when carrying out any kingdom activity is is religion you see religion is an attempt to do spiritual things in ignorance and in the strength of the flesh and all through scripture you see that people who did even nice things religiously they did not receive any reward the system of the kingdom is such that you must take out time to understand the dynamics of whatever it is you want to engage in and then on the strength of that understanding you will now get up and act acting just because others are doing it acting just because you are told to do it acting just because you want to you know ease yourself of the guilt of separation will not bring the desired results that's why we do things for a short time and we do not have the impetus to continue the drive to continue because we largely carry out activities especially in the body of christ there's too much copying many people do not sit down to find out why why this why this why do i have to pray in tongues well i just saw apostle praying in tongues and i think he's good for me that's nice but a time must come in your life where you must have a personal understanding are we together why do i have to tithe i think everybody who i know to be rich is tithing so i should just do it that's not enough conviction is very important in the kingdom you must have a a sense of personal persuasion it produces restful confidence so no matter how sacrificial the activities are your conviction sponsors the strength to go through it lots of people do not prevail over the things they want to do because we largely act without conviction we copy one another we copy men of god we copy churches and then we do not have the strength and the emotional the grace to push it to the limit and to stay there until results are produced the lord will help us tonight in jesus name i i have been burdened especially in recent times um the lord has been putting this burden in my heart concerning the need for the body of christ to 
get back into what we have known in the body of Christ as the ministry of soul winning are we together the establishment of the lordship of Christ in the hearts of men you know sometimes it's like wear and tear we can fade off certain areas of concentration while pursuing others in an attempt to look for certain things we sometimes drift away from the things that represent the foundation the the pivot the epicenter of christianity and our mandate as given by god sometimes we can veer off sincerely but we veer off and then we find out that we are doing other useful kingdom things but we may miss out on that which represents the foundation of the desire of god all through scripture you see from the old testament to the new testament the lord communicating his desire to draw men who have been alienated from him are we together all through scripture he would speak sometimes through the prophets and um, liken a nation to a harlot that has left her husband you hear scriptures like draw near to me and i will draw near to you when jesus came he used different parables that suggested restoration the parable of the lost talent the parable of um, the, the prodigal son you know all kinds of um, um, expressions to communicate the father's desire to have the heart of people that have been rebellious to his way and his counsel turned back to him and i think that while it is true that this is not the only part of kingdom advancement this is a major part of kingdom advancement in fact sincerely speaking listen in order of priority kingdom advancement should first start with establishing the lordship of christ in the hearts of men first before the systems so if we have industrialization we have civilization as a use of as a result of the practice of the culture of the kingdom and we have people going to hell we have people who are not serious with god you know that that is that is um that is not balanced is that true god desires first and foremost more than civilization more than prosperity more than education more than you know people who have come into the working knowledge of the principles of the kingdom god wants the hearts of men the hearts of men to return to him in truth and in sincerity altar calls in many assemblies is almost not observed again and the average believer may be able to boast of other spiritual activities like tithing like giving you know like service in the house of god these are very important aspects of kingdom activities but many people cannot tell you that they have contributed actively to winning and establishing souls everybody say winning and establishing souls say it one more time winning and establishing souls every single one of us here if i ask you to pick up the mic and tell me your experience you will tell me of one person here and there who insisted until you came to the knowledge of christ and for those who were already born again one or two people who had to um sacrificially follow you up until you are now grounded to a, an extent in the things of god and you are helping others too but many of us are unable to extend that spiritual benevolence to others so we sit back enjoying everything that um has come to us through redemption and not extending it to others and most times we tell ourselves i'm not a man of god are we together i'm not a man of god so during a corporate evangelism like we have it we can walk around and talk to people but as a personal revelation that part of your kingdom responsibility as a believer as you'll be learning shortly it is a responsibility listen soul winning establishing the lordship of christ in the hearts of men is the responsibility of every believer it's not a suggestion to choose if you want or not it's, it's, it's like breathing it is part of the component of your spiritual existence and if we are not taught and pushed into that point then there will be no continuity 
a time will come you will find a whole generation bankrupt of spiritual things do you know do you know this was the mistake of many of our parents they loved god they loved jesus christ they kept the values of the kingdom but they did not think it to be such a big deal to pay attention to transferring the lordship of christ to the heart of the children so you can find a man and a wife uh, you know his wife who loved god so much but you will be surprised maybe a pastor and his wife and then you will be very very surprised that they have never actively preached to their child do you know talking to people about spiritual things is not the same as saving them you can discuss tithing you can discuss rapture you can discuss hellfire and heaven that's not preaching so that we are around people discussing the things of god which is good and very valuable but have we paid attention as to whether this person that i'm talking about has my son has my daughter has my friend has my roommate can i truly attest to the fact that this person is saved and if yes is this person actively being established and grounded in the things of god it's a great concern in the heart of god many of us don't care so once you have a child who is doing well in school whether or not he's a serious christian he can come to church do you know many parents do not talk to their children about god the children can learn around but to have a day when you preach to your child and lead him to jesus christ no we leave them to other people are we together now do you know it's so embarrassing when the closest people around us have to walk with us and never get to know jesus and then after many years someone somewhere will be the one to come and save them how many children are taught about jesus but never given an opportunity to declare his lordship look talking about jesus does not save men talking about him talking about spiritual things talking about rapture talking about heaven talking about grace talking about whatever it does not save men men must understand and receive the gospel of salvation and be given an opportunity to declare their willingness to accept his lordship so there are so many people around the body of christ but they are not saved and let me tell you what hardens them because they've been around the things of god so much they know scriptures are we together they can talk they've done so many things that look spiritual and so they convince themselves that by those activities they are saved they are not saved at all do you know let me tell you even coming out marching out to come for altar call does not save men that's not what saves people there's nowhere in the bible that says the moment you come out in an altar call you are saved no these are just representations that have been adopted by the body of christ to help and guide people to be serious about their decision and then to have a way of getting their details and follow them up but that's not what saves people in fact let me surprise you reciting salvation prayer is not even what saves people because the bible says you must believe you can stand and you are joking you are just talking because you have to repeat what you have been told and not be saved and go back and you are still hell bound and a candidate of hell so winning so winning is not just saving people's souls so winning is establishing them let me emphasize this when you get people saved and leave them the way they are they will not grow and chances are that their, their, their lives eventually many of them will derail and even get back to their lives establishing the lordship of christ is more than just saying a salvation prayer so you guide someone and he says lord jesus you know i am born again and you are happy you say this guy i, I saved him he's my soul the key is establishment 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 very very important 
that believers not only come and bring people but see to it that they are established all through scripture we see that the lord um has emphasized the need of people who are lost to come and to draw nigh to him so every believer is called to participate in the advancement of the kingdom but more specifically tonight in establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men there is nothing as beautiful as a life that has been changed transformed you know when when how many of you have seen someone you know was not serious with god and then all of a sudden you look at that person a few years later and find out that the person is a burning and a shining light there's nothing more beautiful than a life whose values changed a life whose ideologies changed someone can come and say i love the lord with all my heart that's how some of you were you are even surprised finding yourself in the house of god loving god so passionately and pressing into the things of god some of you know where you were who you were and all sorts of stories but by his grace look what he's turned your life into now so there is a spiritual reality that must be established in the hearts of men being born again is not just an emotional thing it must come with transformation it must come with transformation when men are not transformed by the power of the word then it is not the word that saved them there must be transformation so there's a lot of faulty supposed born again many believers who claim they are born again and for many years many years yes of course i know that our growth in the spirit is progressive but at a point in your life i should be able to look at you and see your values altered the same thing you used to believe before and after no change the same way you used to live no change the same convictions the same ideology believe me you are not born again are we together now yeah there should be progressive transformation as a sign that the seed of the word of God has been planted within your spirit. And if we don't pay attention to this, we will keep celebrating crowds for instance and we'll keep looking at a society that is depraved men and women who God, you see, that's why there are so many members in church but very little people that God can find space to move with why is it that we have millions of members congregations scattered around the world but god is still looking for people because there are very few people i'm telling you this who have experientially allowed the lordship of christ to be established in their hearts they are the ones who have given him space to find expression through their lives before i continue i want to ask you a very sincere question can you look at your life you who was or were and you who is now can you note a noticeable um, tangible transformation if you cannot find a transformation in ideology in beliefs in passion in priority you need to revisit what you have called being saved say amen praise the lord mm. all kinds of music before all kinds of music after anyhow living before anyhow living after and you say it doesn't matter no it, it matters you are not born again it's as simple as that there must be some degree of priority the passion look let me tell you something when a woman is pregnant are we together when a woman is pregnant the transformation that occurs in her is mandatory and automatic mandatory and automatic except except she has not taken in if she has taken in it will begin to alter her psychologically physiologically there will be noticeable alterations 
that's how it must be if the seed of the word of god has been planted in you then there should be certain things your appetites your desires your values and most importantly your priority let me tell you how you know you are really saved is that your priority about god and the things of god supersedes every other thing yeah that's what our parents told us when they got born again all of a sudden there's this song that says um when all things that surrounds me become shadow in the light of you that's what happens a new life a new life and all of a sudden you look at the things that represented your aspirations and your passions and they look like shadows compared to what you have found this is how jesus teaches about salvation that someone had a field listen and then he found a treasure the parable of the treasure he found a treasure when he saw the excellency of that treasure what did he do he went and made sure that he sold everything bought that property and remained there but what we do is we take the treasure and go somewhere else that's not salvation you are not saved what i'm saying i know that is hitting a lot of us but i am telling you sincerely it is important if you're a pastor here don't sit down and keep smiling at your congregation because they are smiling back at you make sure they are saved make sure that the people you are leading that the people you labor on day and night are saved you see that passion to see souls saved is not in many of us so you can have a roommate you can have a friend you can even have your loved one and not care there is no contribution from your part to make God a priority. No. Not saying anything, not doing anything. I cannot see any active effort on your part that you are making to turn their hearts to righteousness. Is God helping us tonight? It is part of our kingdom responsibility if we love God to be in intentionally committed listen intentionally committed not circumstantially committed if it just so happens that i find a soul that needs jesus and he says sir i want to be born again then you lead him to christ that's not evangelism that's not evangelism the same way people intentionally look for jobs because you know without that job there is no food the same way people intentionally look for husband and wife someone comes and says, jimmy I'm, I'm trying to look for a life partner you see how serious the person is that's how serious you must also be with soul winning see this is not religion there is a spirit the spirit of the christ that is at work in you will push you to do that you see the gospel when truly received and the power therein will you will be too grateful to keep quiet find out people in the bible who receive things from jesus even when jesus said don't tell anybody they were too grateful to keep quiet the madman at gadara the bible says he went to the decapolis and brought the people remember the, the that woman who married um six men and jesus being the seventh man in her life the bible says she left her she went to fetch water but she encountered something that was superior. She left it. When God is one of many important things in your life, there's an encounter you've not had. You hear me say this all the time. Listen, listen. The God being a priority, non-negotiable priority, under no circumstance, regardless of what excuses you would have should god at any point be second place in your life that's what must happen to you first you must experience it so that when you get someone born again you know what the person should become like when you get people born again and they do not yet have your passion you know the job has not finished you should draw them to a point where it eats them up it's called the zeal of the lord hallelujah so you can stay 10 years how many husbands whose wives are not saved and they don't care how many wives whose husbands are not saved 
how many children whose parents are not saved look at me over 90 percent if not everyone if not everyone including myself you look at your immediate family or your extended family you will find people who you know are on their way to hell it's a highway to hell are we together now yeah i know that you hear people say this emotionally just preaching evangelism but i want to tell you something i don't mean to scare you but i want to seriously tell you there is a real place called hell there is a real place today like this called hell are we together the bible says and books were open listen to me books were open and another book was open which was the book of life hear what the bible says whosoever's name was not found written thereof the bible did say he was advised to wait somewhere he was cast into the lake of fire that was burning with brimstone and sulfur that's what the bible says The Bible says it is appointed unto man to die once. Listen carefully. It says afterwards the judgment. It didn't say after that a celebration. It is appointed unto man. You see, in my little life and the privilege that ministry has afforded me, please listen carefully. I have had the opportunity to be at several funerals. I've had the opportunity to watch the bodies of people I knew were once alive, now dead. At that point, brothers and sisters, please look at me. Whether you have a PhD, listen please. Whether you had a first class, are we together? No matter what it is that you have had that you call your accomplishment in life. I don't care what you have done. I don't care where you have gone to. At in five minutes not breathing it becomes useless has it occurred to you I can be standing here looking nice with my kaftan and no breath and I'm gone this body lies lifeless you will wake it you will pray on it you will prophesy on it you will pour oil on it the body lies down lifeless what does that tell you it tells you we have to focus on the things that are eternal listen 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 seeing then that the relevance of the things we chase and pursue are only relevant for as long as this body is alive so if i give somebody school fees that's good he's going to school if you say you want to marry and I give you 500,000 to help you and marry, you will like me. You will be very happy. But the moment your body, this body you are seeing, can no longer host your spirit, everything becomes useless. Jesus gave us a parable that is so touching about a man, um, Lazarus and the rich man. Do you still study your Bible? Or the job took it away. There was a man who the Bible says was very wealthy. And there was another man who was Lazarus. I'm not talking of poverty and prosperity. I'm talking of two people. Are we together now? The Bible tells us that the eternal destiny of that man was nothing like his life on earth. Brothers and sisters, this is what the Bible says. If our hope is only in this life, only in this life, we are of all men most miserable have you seen them slaughter a chicken you've seen chicken one minute it has life trying to escape and you are very messless over it you put it down and in a few minutes the life is gone just like a vapor and that thing is lying down there and when you hold it two hours later you are about to eat it you look at this this was once alive now it's in your hands and you are about to eat it the same way like that chicken listen nobody may eat you but i guarantee you a time will come listen please very importantly a time will come where this mortal body will either be laid to rest or will be translated to another body 
it really doesn't matter which one comes as far as the glory that is coming is concerned because it makes no difference but one thing i can tell you is this there is nobody nobody who is not born again who has received the son who will make heaven one two there is nobody who has not received who, who has rejected christ that will spend eternity with him because it's not about heaven we are still coming back to the earth but the question is so that where i am there you may be only true believers shall be right our uncles are not true believers listen our aunties are not true believers we watch them we know they are not born again our colleagues are not true believers but we do not care we do not know that it is a responsibility do you know the last time i checked which was many years ago statistically eight people die per second how many people from when koinonia started till now calculate if we are still working by that eight people and part of all those people who died some were tongue-talking christians some were pastors some were prophets are we together now they've all died no matter what you think about them see this life is brief i am waking us up to focus on the things that represent priorities for the kingdom god has priorities and we must we must train ourselves to adjust in the midst of all of the blessings i'm still going to talk about a few more things but i have to press this as a foundation so winning is not a suggestion so winning kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men it's not a suggestion it's not for pastors it's not for those who are free and don't have a job yet no take it down mike i want to sing a song don Moen song when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did i do my best to live for truth did i live my life for you when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in my clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life every other thing in life only becomes meaningful when your eternal destiny is secured did you hear what i said every other thing in life hear me please every other thing in life i don't care what it is is only relevant when you can guarantee that your soul is saved and then you must extend that passion to as many people as the grace of God upon your life can make happen every time there is a bereavement they send me text messages and I get a text message oh apostle so 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 has died and you know the first thing that comes to my heart most times over 90% of the people send me a text and say apostle I know if you speak a word he will come back to life frankly speaking I believe in miracles I believe in miracles I've seen great miracles in my life and in this ministry but my concern listen my concern 
is not so much about bringing the person back to life listen as it is knowing that this person died in christ you can die in money where are you going mention it you can die in education where are you going to you can die in politics where are you going to die in an aircraft the only ones that are wise are those who live in christ and if need be die in christ it's not that you died in what you can die in worry it's still hell you can die in stress it's still hell please hear what i am saying you see people dying all the time and we keep watching them there are people today every time you think of you know right now based on the bible except if there are other mysteries we do not yet currently know i believe that there are many supernatural things that we cannot all explain but as far as the revelation of the bible and our understanding of it now has afforded us we know that those who did not die in christ are lost and gone they left their houses behind listen to me they left their certificates behind i'm not saying those things are not important but they are only important listen they are only important when the major things are in place is your father born again if you hear right now look at me listen wherever your father is if you hear right now that he drops dead will you rejoice will you cry in joy or will you cry in grief if you hear that your mother has gone to be with the lord will you rejoice will you cry in joy or cry in grief what of your roommate what of you because there are people who will never take this thing seriously you will always come for koinonia you will always go to churches and do a lot of things but are you saved it's a very serious question that you are working for god does not mean you are saved that you have a christian name joshua jesus our salvation no 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 As we worship you, let all the world come and see how the mercy we receive from you can set men free. That's very important. They need to come. We need to participate in getting. This is not adding members to a church. Listen, listen. Now, this is where I have a problem. Come. When, when we go for evangelism, for most people sadly speaking we are just shopping for larger congregations now of course it should culminate into church growth but the foundation listen is to grant that this person has an opportunity to be turned to righteousness do you know i can get this brother saved filled with the holy spirit loving the lord and as i've gotten him saved I've gotten 200 other people saved in him. Are we together? Because this person now will take those values. Look how some of you, a few of you that have really participated in soul winning, look what has happened through your life to others. I'll never forget one of our ladies years ago. She might be streaming following right now. And um, her entire family, they were not born again. None of them was saved. Then she got born again. And God granted her grace. I think her younger brother also got born again. And then eventually, you know, she kept pressing passionately and intentionally. The mom now got born again. It was left the father alone. That man refused and said, no way, he will not get born again. I know if you ask her what she wanted God to do in her family, it's not to build a house. It's not to go and build a house in the village and prove a point. She just wanted everyone to be saved. I remember very clearly like yesterday the day her dad was saved when her father was saved she called me crying we met around then in the campus chapel 
and she said look her whole family had been saved do you know when he was saved his family members had to drive to his place and they say which worry made you to give up what you were practicing and give your life to jesus if his finances we can sort it out and the man got saved on that living faith so that 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 fire has come to stay the joy of salvation when we give testimonies and we say praise the lord i built a house somebody just built a house and it dashed me we stand up we roll on the ground but when we say praise the lord someone god said we just clap and please go and sit down because of our priority our priority i've seen a few people that have trusted god to be saved get saved and i've been surprised at the joy the joy that filled my heart who in your life needs to be saved through you not needs to be saved who in your life needs to be saved through you there are people who the prophetic mandate is on you to bring their salvation and you're not doing anything about it I challenge every mother here and every father here after this meeting go and sit down with your children if you can especially some of the little ones don't allow this our little the moment they have gotten to an age of discretion if they can steal if they can fight they can be saved talk to them are we together now you don't allow children just leave them around a child will insult you visitors are talking is answering back that means he understands jesus you can call him and preach intelligently and let that child say when a child has not gotten to the age of discretion the salvation of the parents cover the child but the moment he gets to the age of discretion from that's why there are no children in hell because the salvation of their parents will cover them god bless you we have a threefold participation let's rush quickly threefold participation there are only three ways we can partner with god in soul winning and the establishment of the lordship of christ across the hearts of men only three ways and i want to teach you now please pay attention because it has nothing to do with whether you are a pastor listen i think i should press this in this is not the work of pastors this is not the work of apostles and prophets and missionaries and mission agencies this is not the work of men and women of god this is a responsibility that is saddled on every believer it's just that we are not taught that when you are saved we teach people about their rights in christ but we never teach people about their responsibility in christ the only reason you have rights is for responsibilities you cannot be taught about your right in christ the inheritance that you have gotten and not be taught what your kingdom responsibility is with every privilege comes responsibility every privilege there's no privilege that does not come with responsibility if i buy you a car then you start maintaining it you come to me to maintain the car i return it back because it means you are not qualified it's a privilege but i i i give you that on the strength of an understanding that you can maintain it is that true when god gives you an anointing he expects you to press to gain the character dimension to sustain it that's the responsibility that comes with that privilege if you love privileges without responsibility then you are an irresponsible person so we have a threefold participation the first dimension or the first participation the first way any one of us can participate actively in establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men number one is the ministry of warfare and intercession write it down the first participation that everyone and no one has an excuse because you don't pay for prayer there's no you, it's not something you go and wait for an atm no the grace is there once you are alive and you are in christ the ministry of what warfare 
an intercession. Why do we have to pray? So that the hearts of men will be open to receive the gospel. We are going to look at a number of scriptures. 2 Corinthians 4, please. Verse 3 to 4. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3 to 4. And then you give us 1 Corinthians chapter 6, chapter 16, verse 9. The ministry of warfare and intercession. Look up, please. We are going to read a lot of scriptures. We we'll have to be very fast. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are what? So, as obvious as these truths are, when somebody is not in Christ, it's not as easy as you think it is. There, is. there are lots of things you can believe now because the Spirit of God is in you to help you believe. How you know it was the Spirit of God is because you criticize this before. You criticize praying in tongues. You criticize a lot of things, but now you have embraced it. It's by the Spirit. It's not just by growth and maturity, physically speaking. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Aha, uh -huh, next verse. Verse 4, please. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Are you seeing why they believe not? Because although they are looking at you, their minds, their spirits are blinded. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So, you can see that man. The moment you leave Koinonia, he looks at you and says, Now, what, what, what kind of thing are you doing? You sing for over, over 30 minutes. Are you the only one? I mean, can't you just sing praise and worship for 10 minutes and hurry up and go? Don't just insult them. There is something that is making that happen. When they say, shout Jesus or do this and you are doing and somebody is watching and say, ah, how can responsible people behave like this? There is a spirit that makes spiritual things of non-effect to people who are not in Christ. That's what necessitates the ministry of intercession. If your wife or your husband is obviously not open to the things of God, don't hate them, don't fight. There is a spirit, listen, there are spirits that stand to make sure that people do not return to God in truth. So you can see someone who is a smoker. You will sit down and talk to him. While you are talking to him, the guy will say, Kai, this will be the last cigarette. And you are watching him. You are even encouraged. Then you rub his back and say, you are a good boy. Two weeks later, you check his pocket and it's not just one. You will see a packet. Because there is a spirit. Listen, counseling never saves people. You don't counsel people into salvation. That encounter with the seed of the word of God that breaks everything because it's not physical like falling under the anointing. We have little respect for it. If someone falls under the anointing, it has a physical manifestation. And so we say, wow, great power was on him. But when someone gets born again, most times we trivialize it because we think it is not supernatural enough. The ministry of warfare and intercession. Have you noticed for those of you who live with so many people who are not born again, is when you pray and return from spiritual things that there are hostilities. Have you noticed that? The moment you finish praying, that's the day you will fight with your father or your mother. It's not normal. There are spirits. They respond. Just like Daniel finished praying and the spirits began to move certain people in Babylon to come and put a decree. So you finish praying. You just rounded up three days fasting. As you are rounding it up, there is war. All of a sudden, your food becomes salty. Madam, you are in trouble. No, there is a spirit. Look, men are slaves to the spirits that control or influence them. This body is a, is a dumb terminal. This body is only an executor of whatever spirit controls or influences it. You have to know this about people. So that you can learn to love people. This is one of the understandings that sponsors loving people. It's difficult to love people based on the way they behave. You have to look beyond that. You have to access an information that is more than that. So if your younger brother tries to fight you and beat you. And you look at him and say I will kill you. You are fighting in the flesh. There is a spirit. No sane person will do that. 
when a woman carries bottle and breaks the head of her husband in response to no money or anger do you think that i know she thought she was just angry look at jesus and peter get deep behind me satan ah -ah. peter looks at jesus and says me he says look peter i know you don't know but i am seen in the realm of the spirit satan came and perched at your soul and took advantage of your voice to advise me not to go to the cross and he saw it he said satan desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not he said and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren because he will come and do the same to them demons speak to men they don't have to be under the influence of or, 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 under under the anointing there are many people saying nonsense you know it's a spirit that is speaking there's a way you see men talk you know that's not them an interchange between them and another spirit the same way you hear a man speak and you know this is not an ordinary man speaking it is got to be a divine spirit speaking through him so you have to pray when you religiously stand up to go and win souls like that you can return with casualties you must pray challenge those spirits that's what we do in koinonia before every service the prayer department is praying I am praying we, we clear the atmosphere so when we come we have already sent an incense of prayer and once we begin to speak the word of God penetrates the hearts of people like he's doing yours now and when you make the altar call you see people coming and you are even surprised seeing those who are coming because prayer and intercession listen when the spirits that influence men and blind their minds leave you will be surprised to see how innocent and fragile those people are are we together i once ministered to a gentleman somewhere uh, while they they used to do counseling at my place and this guy entered and he just entered and sat down and came in with the mother and the mother said this this boy I, i'm tired of him he's a terrible person he's this and that and while i was looking at him the lord opened my eyes and i'm telling you there was a spirit comfortably comfortably when i say comfortable you know that this spirit is not under pressure whatsoever and i saw that this is what makes this boy behave this way they said when this boy is angry true god is my witness even five people will not be able to hold him is that a normal human being hmm. the ministry of prayer listen before you do anything pray pray i think this is worth talking about i'm not necessarily teaching on prayer tonight but learn to pray let prayer precede your action don't sit down and assume you know what to do pray 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 before taking decisions pray before taking actions there are spirits that are antichrist everywhere the antichrist is not just a person the antichrist is a spirit that is at work now opposing the purposes of god in the lives of men pray you are going for a job interview you just say i got first class you are not praying you want to go and save someone you are not praying the moment you are going the spirit is waiting there as you are entering he will tell you see i tried calling you yesterday you didn't pick you think i'm your mate say sorry i came to talk to you about just get out of here and then when you leave the spirit leaves and the person is back you see people acting you know it's not them they may never admit it but brothers and sisters there is a spiritual realm everybody say there is a spiritual realm that controls the happenings of everything here listen it is the day you want to come for koinonia that the person who is supposed to give you money will vow and say i will never give you money again why it was not about that it's because you are going somewhere and you will hear something that will change you You've got to pray people who do not pray become victims i know we live in a time where people say it's not all about prayer <laughs> it's about it oh it's about it in this wicked world that we live in you have to pray keep the forces of darkness where they belong keep the forces of darkness where they belong you must pray you must pray he spake a parable to the end that men ought always not often to pray so you pray 
Lord, I'm coming for koinonia. I know that there are people coming with burdens and there are wicked spirits that will try to cause trouble for them on the way so that they will not get to CGC. There are all kinds of things like their phone missing, like their wallet missing so that they will stay arguing on it and not arrive there and hear the word that will change them. So we pray. We silence those spirits. And while you are, you just plan that I'm not coming for Koinonia today. Say why? Say I don't have transport. Someone else wants to come to Koinonia in answer to that prayer. The Holy Ghost will lead the friend to come and say, let's go. Say I'm not ready. Say I'll pay for you. You see, that's an answer. It, it looked like action in the earth, but prayer programmed it. Prayer programmed it. How many believers live their lives carelessly and we are victims the purposes of god is not advanced because many do not pray when was the last time you took a prayer request and knelt down in your prayer altar woke up in the night to pray just for intercession father increase more souls salvation don't say me i'm the shy type can't you pray men ought always to pray and not to faith. Let me tell you, listen there are many of our loved ones I guarantee you, from now to December, if you will pray for them, you will be surprised what will happen they may not listen to you, but one day God will take them to one meeting where one man of God is and before you know it, the power of God will carry them in that meeting, the next thing you just hear, they will tell you I've been filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm two weeks old praying in tongues Everybody say, I will pray. Say, I will intercede. Warfare prayers. Warfare prayers are not discussions. Listen, warfare prayers are not prayers of petition. Right? We have a teaching like that, hopefully next year on prayer, a series on prayer. There is a difference between supplication. There's a difference between petition. Warfare prayer is you taking advantage of all the tools that has been given to you in redemption. The name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the word of God. These are tools that are given to engage the forces of darkness and establish the victory that has been wrought in Christ over people, over territories. When we talk of warfare and intercession, that's not the, that's one of the reasons. Listen, listen, hold on. That's one of the reasons why God gave us the prayer language of tongues. It's not just for you to feel anointed. It's a mechanism to help you engage in intense warfare. Intense warfare. Do you know? Let me just digress a bit and speak to someone here. You are where you are now because you have not caused the gates of hell to give way we don't we don't it's not by physical strength this victory is wrought in the secret place one hour two hours you listen listen let me teach you how to pray you see you don't pray come david you don't pray blindly you use your mind like a like a picture to zoom the thing that you are trusting God for and you direct your prayer there. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible, I will show you where this is. The Bible says he can do above the things that we ask or your imagination must play a role in prayer. The tongues is directing it, but your mind is like you keep a picture. So I'm praying for my family. That's what is on my mind. As I'm praying in tongues, I know that these tongues is not for edification of my spirit. These tongues is for warfare to that end. Yeah, that's how to pray. That's how to pray fire that produces results. You lock yourself off your phone. That's not the time to be pinging and praying. You are not serious. You pray with your heart see let me tell you i believe in corporate prayer but i believe in personal prayer there are certain dimensions you will only hit when you are alone hmm. there is a way you can be praying with somebody at a point the person will be tired and he will make you feel stupid you too you will feel guilty and say oh yeah let's round up father we give you all the glory has god finished with you listen when you are praying the holy spirit is not there as a tenant 
He's the direction of both the duration and the strategy of the prayer. You don't choose how long you just want to pray. You stay there till you command victory. I tell you, if, you, if that is established in the realm of the spirit, you can walk out and laugh and watch all the physical nonsense and jargons that happen because they have been settled in the realm of the spirit. Many people do not settle things in the realm of the spirit. That's why whatever comes to you physically destroys you. Unfortunately, it's unbelievers that know how to engage this. The moment you speak to somebody and say, see, um, you are not going to get promoted. Then he looks at you and says, all right, manager, I've had you. The next thing the guy said, can I take one week uh, break? I just want to go and say hello to my family. And the person rushes immediately. In the night while you are snoring your way, the person is there. And he, all his anger is in the realm of the spirit. He's with the herbal is there. He's baffing. He's drinking. He's saying whatever things. Doing all kinds of things. Then they carry your picture and do all sorts of things. And the herbal is to say he's done. And then all of a sudden, the manager is sleeping in the night and sees a stranger walk up in his dream and say, if you don't promote this guy, the guy will get up in the morning and call the board meeting and say, look, a few developments have been happening strangely in this company and we are promoting somebody. Listen, you who is the Christian, you are there angry and saying, but I'm qualified. And the guy is saying, congratulations, sir. Ah, you are now a great man. And then he takes the title of whatever to the shrine and that's how they move forward there are people who literally live with charms as in they live with it they, it's a daily bread, it's their version of prayer they know they must be in constant touch that's why you talk to them, they say be careful though. you are talking to me, you will die like a chicken and you too that you don't hear and you, die like, and you find out that your leg is already swelling before evening you don't confront darkness carelessly until you have stamina in the spirit. All this bragging we do in the body of Christ will land us in trouble. Will land us in big trouble. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Meaning there are some people that are not known. Can I say I must be known? Somebody say it. Can you pray in the spirit just in one minute? Sound an alarm to the gates of darkness. Shakata balataka. Rakata preskadia. No, the fight is not physical. The fight is not physical. The fight cannot be physical. It's in the realm of the spirit. Victories are established in the realm of the spirit. The physical realm is only a, a realm where people act. They act what has been finished. Stop confronting realities from the physical realm. The job issue is spiritual. The salvation issue is spiritual. The stubbornness of your loved ones are spiritual. Stop wasting your time. Stop blaming people. It's from the realm of the spirit. That's how you command victory. The ministry does not just grow by publicity. It's in the realm of the spirit. Pray, pray. Skapata kata li katosh. Enkre to kata la bakata. Seke teke 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 te. Reko to koto pa kata la bawa. Bata pras kata. Oh yes, I am victorious. Te poto shola ba 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 ba. Every unsaved person will tear down those walls. We command the forces that stop them from hearing the gospel. Every spirit that stops them from going to the house of the Lord. We command it. Hallelujah. Please sit down. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. Thank you, David. Quickly. 1 mm. Corinthians 16 verse 9. Look up, please. Write these scriptures. I will just talk on them quickly and then we'll move to the next one. For a great door and effectual is open up to me. What is the limitation? There are what? 
The person wants to come. You say he stays close to Koinonia here. His house is just close by. It looks short in the physical, but in the spirit, the distance is far. It would take prayer to shorten it. Clear those forces off. Hmm. See, let me tell you. There is a way the devil can know you. Your voice. The same way you say hello and you know somebody's voice. Yeah, you can be known. Hmm. Because you are, you are a frequent uh, in, in in network there are those there, there are frequent programs Th those you you step into a package for those who are always calling many of us only call when there's trouble it must become a habit you must pray you are lying down and you just roll just for waking up for that one minute the devil hears it she kata kata baya. and then you sleep again mm. Let me tell you, when, when you are like that, you will be surprised what will happen to you. You will get up and just in a few minutes, you are just sitting down and the moment the thought of someone comes, he's not saved. That's not the time to say, oh, I think I'm missing him. No, Rika Tokaba. What is happening to him now? We secure him. Marakoto Sobadaka. Pray. And then you wake up with any dream that does not look like it. Oh, come on. See, I'm teaching you what I do. If I'm not doing it, you will know. You wake up with a dream that doesn't make sense as you are waking up. Eh? Before you, as you are waking up, the spirit that was sent on that errand will know that one who has understanding is there. I know it looks like I'm sounding silly. But this is how victories are commanded. So you look at men in the physical and you cannot see what they are doing physically. So you will be angry because you expect them to, to labor physically. But the labor is in the spirit. Hmm. Any church, listen, there are three departments. Now every department is important, especially in Koinonia. But hear me, I'm speaking to pastors. There are three departments in any church and any ministry. If the devil wants to destroy that ministry, there are three departments. Number one, the ministerial team. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. One, the first place of attack of darkness is the shepherd the man of god or the ministerial team number two the worship team listen carefully they are vested with the responsibility of creating the atmosphere for the presence of god to find expression and the devil will do anything within his power to water down the efficacy of the presence of god number three the prayer department by the time the prayer and and for the prayer department it doesn't he there, there are very little things that kill prayer people big things don't destroy prayer people little things little things i like this lady why do you like her too and your entire robust prayer life comes under fire ah pride little things are you getting blessed any man of god who has spiritual sense will guard these ministries in his church or his ministry personally do you know let me tell you let me teach you one secret on how by the grace of god i administrate over e and i it's like there's something god has done to my spirit it's like a rope god connected my spirit to every department all the departments in this ministry is like a rope huh the same way there is i mean it literally there is a level of course they rise and fall they move up and down but there is a level that no department must go under the moment they go under i pick it in the spirit immediately i know something is wrong either i must come and find out what is wrong or i must pray or whatever it is if the problem is from me you know for sure a retreat quick the, 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 every other thing is cancelled that's how you sustain fire you must be sensitive and discerning and prayer does that second corinthians chapter 5 second corinthians 1 verse 5 to 11 long reading quickly let me just take our time and let's read quickly 
we have a number of scriptures and i want us to read them one verse five okay it says for as the sufferings of christ abound in us so our consolation also abounded we are reading down quickly please down to 11 it says and whether we be afflicted it is for your consolation and salvation which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffered this and that and that now listen it says hold on it says which we also suffer or whether it be comforted it is for your what and next verse and our hope of you is steadfast knowing that as ye are partakers of the suffering so shall ye also of the consolation we're reading to 11 hurry up please for we would not brethren have you ignorant of our trouble listen which came to us in asia that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in god which raised the dead look at what they went through verse 10 who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will deliver us last verse 11 ye also helping together how that's why we were victorious ye also while we were going through those things in the mission field when they were about to kill us this is how you help ye also helping together by prayer for us so it was not just that we were mighty men of god there were times we were about facing death but ye also helped us by prayer next scripture very powerful scriptures that's why i'm reading them philippians chapter 1 14 to 19 please let's hurry up oh, just give us verse 19 really our time is gone but you can write this philippians 1 14 to 19 scriptures that talk about the role of warfare and intercession verse 19 it says for i know i wish we could read from 14 it says for i know that this shall turn to my word how through your i know that the things that are happening around my life will eventually translate to salvation for me and that will happen through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of jesus christ next scripture isaiah 62 verse 6 to 7 the ministry of prayer the ministry of intercession and warfare cannot be overemphasized let's read it two verses i have set watchmen upon thy walls O jerusalem which shall never hold their peace day nor night ye that make mention of the lord he says keep not silence next verse and give him no rest until what happens until he establish until he makes jerusalem a place in the earth there are men who pray jesus to come and are the prophetess there are people who pray the purposes of god to find expression hmm. let me give you two more scriptures romans chapter 10 verse 1 and then we look at first timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 quickly please romans chapter 10 verse 1 and then first timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 i'm giving you all these scriptures because I, I expect that you go back and sit down and thoroughly look at them it says brethren my heart's desire and prayer to god for israel is that they might be what was the content of my prayer they might be my heart desire for my family members and my prayer to God for them is that they might be last scripture is the grand scripture first Timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 very powerful scriptures first Timothy 2 1 to 5 I exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercession and giving of thanks be made for how many people for all men right for kings and for all that are in authority 
that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty three reading down to five for this is good and acceptable in the sight of our savior who will have how many who will have so why do we intercede it is in god's desire that we not only pray for our churches but we pray for territories because his desire is that all men be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth last verse for there is one god there is one mediator between god and men the man christ jesus he desires that that man christ jesus be revealed and that will happen when prayer supplication giving of thanks be made for all men that god will save them the second way you participate in establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men the second way is through the ministry of direct soul winning through the ministry of direct soul winning matthew 9 37 to 38 let's have the following scriptures matthew 9 37 to 38 then we'll look at second timothy 4 verse 5 thank you jesus god is helping us matthew chapter 9 37 to 38 listen then said he to his disciples the harvest is truly what plenteous but the laborers are few next verse he says pray ye therefore that the lord of the harvest will send forth laborers that's the second dimension to be the laborer yourself the goers the ones who will make sure that they are participating actively talking to people if it means creating a blog if it means taking advantage of the social media if it means connecting people to the resources and the ministries and the platforms that will get them saved you are the goers second timothy 4 5 second timothy 4 5 it says but watch thou in all things endure afflictions and do the work of an evangelist you are not an evangelist but do the work of an evangelist fulfill your calling do the work of an evangelist don't say i'm not an evangelist i'm not called into the fivefold ministry no he says do the work of an evangelist john chapter 3 verse 7 very instructive verse jesus himself speaking i'd like you to read it it's projected one to read marvel not that i said unto you aha uh -huh, ye must be born again i make it mandatory for your eternal salvation and so there must be goers forceful write these other scriptures down we'll project only one more but i want you to write this colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 the verses of emphasis is verse 5 to 8 colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 then give us romans chapter 10 please verse 8 to 14 romans 10 8 to 14 quickly please romans 10 8 to 14 thank you but what saith it look up please the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Nine, we're reading down. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Read on. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it talks about salvation. Read what it says. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed 12 for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him so he's talking about calling upon him now then he says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be now this is the problem 14 
how then shall they call upon him whom they have not believed the people is not like they are rebellious but no one has told them no one has given them an opportunity it says how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard then he says how shall they hear without a preacher there's got to be somebody who will take up that laborious responsibility to take the gospel to them very quickly the third key so that we will pray The third way you participate in establishing the lordship of God's kingdom in the hearts of men is to become a kingdom financier. Write it down. So number one, we see the ministry of warfare and intercession. Number two, you are the goer. Number three, a kingdom financier. Who is that? They are the men and women who supply financial resources for soul winning financial resources for the gospel anyone who loves god and is interested in participating in building his kingdom and advancing the frontiers of his kingdom in the hearts of men god is giving you what to do there are so many people who are so idle in the body of christ and they say i've not discovered my purpose there is a mandate that is upon all of us an intercessor a goer you are a laborer and then a kingdom financier let's look at a few scriptures luke chapter 5 please luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 9 i found this scripture a few years ago and it blessed me i want you to pay attention pay close attention i want to share a few things that will really really bless you luke chapter 5 is a long reading just follow me and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of the Lord, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret too. And he saw two sheep standing by the lake. Take note. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. No miracle. No salvation. Next verse. And he entered into one of the sheep which was Simon's and prayed him that he would trust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep yes please now when he had left speaking he said unto simon that's the reward he gets now for donating his boat launch out into the deep listen please and let down your nets for a drought this is talking about fish but we are relating this to souls now okay verse six okay verse five and simon answering listen he said master we have toiled all night and have taken nothing nevertheless at your word i will let down the net we're reading down to 11. and when they had this done they enclosed a what a great multitude of fish they were now winning souls and the ministry was expanding beyond their capacity now souls were coming but they needed a lot of help next verse and they beckon on their and they beckon on their they would have lost those souls because now there were more souls coming and they were holding more programs and the current financial level of the ministry could not take it and instead of losing the souls they called on certain people and he says which were in the other ship they called on to them come and help us so that we do not lose the souls and he says that they should come and help them and they came and filled both ships so that they even began to sink they called on their partners their net was about to break it would have been a wasted effort because now they do not have venue for prayer those who were born again did not have a venue for prayer so they called on Rema Chapel Come to us as partners and give us a venue so that we can pray lest those that are saved be lost listen 
there are men and women and everybody in my opinion in my opinion should participate in supplying financial resources for soul winning for God's end time agenda you know this this thing about finances every time it is said most people and, and of course I know that there are people who have um, done a lot of different kinds of things but the truth remains and hear me please that one of the responsibility I said responsibility you don't have to say we are raising offering please pastor alpha come and give 10,000 pastor Femi come and give 5,000 no it should be part the same way you tithe there should be a portion of your income that is designed to support the advancement of God's kingdom that is very very practice in Islam right in fact it's part of the tenants they do it very very well that whenever you are rich you know it's been it's been a teaching that they grew up with that part of that resource should be committed in the building of you know um, 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 all of the, the structures that they raise and all of that when you read Acts chapter 4 don't turn there just write it down Acts chapter 4 32 to 37 the Bible says how that the early church they had a culture the Bible says there were people who sold their lands there are people who sold certain things and brought the resources it said none lacked among them there was such flow of supplies there was such flow of benevolence because many of them knew that part of their responsibilities were to supply financial resources Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a I'm giving you a few scriptures Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a it says cry yet saying thus saith the Lord of hosts my cities how shall they be spread abroad through prosperity shall they be spread abroad and I will yet comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem there is a place of financial supplies hear me please for the advancement of the kingdom and this is not a favor you know hold on please the way many believers the way many believers address this thing when they have a seed maybe to sow to a man of God or to a church the, the way they drag themselves and carry it and make it as if they are doing a favor do you know God is my witness I, I stand before the God of heaven and I lie not if you look at my financial statement God is my witness and I say this before the God of heaven whom I serve in the spirit more than 70% of my financial resources at this current level is distributed spread to the body of Christ for the advancement of the kingdom believe me I stand before God in heaven how much money can you use for yourself how much clothes can you buy this is not something that I started doing now it's been there when your heart is committed towards God because where your heart is there your treasure will be also committed for kingdom advancement there are many programs I don't uh, they are not directly my business the moment I hear about it I see what I can do to support it I'll never forget early this year there was a pastor very great man of God you know nice pastor somewhere and certain things happened and they were about to jam him and the people out of the venue and God was helping them I know this is a man that loves God and fears God and he called me he said man of God we're about to get embarrassed on Sunday there is no place of worship I said over my dead body not when I'm alive at least it's within my power how much is needed for this please send me your account details let me see what I can do and that man called me and was crying together with his wife they were both crying and said the Lord will bless you see kingdom investment is one of the greatest ways to be a businessman kingdom investment 
believe me when I tell you when done with a pure heart and done sincerely and out of love is a jackpot in the realm of wealth forget that the result may not look like it's coming immediately my goodness you will receive answers to prayers you did not pray kingdom investment as a lifestyle not something you do when some money just comes how can i have money that someone blesses me and the kingdom never participates in it no way and it's not because of koinonia no so you don't think it's just a bias just because i'm leading a ministry not at all i consider myself to be a proper kingdom financier there are many men of god who don't give they don't even sow to the work they are doing they don't they demand for money from anybody but they never give are we together how can i sit down i'm staying in a house of 20 million and they need a carpet of 1 million in the house of god no way no way no way no way no way see i'm showing you things that you do for the sake of the kingdom that will move the heart of god to vow certain vows i learned this i learned this attitude from david Biome. is a man who truly truly is a is a principality territorial principality when it comes to wealth and finances his pastors are the are about the highest paid they are more paid than bankers they live in an estate this is a church but it came through giving there are many of you let me talk to you i want I'm, I'm not saying this i want to help you there are many of you when the offering basket is passing it's truly i say this not don't think i'm trying to manipulate you i fear god but let me tell you something i'll tell you why many of us never strike a chord and get the attention of god through our giving immediately after the grace you are going to eat buns outside of almost 500 naira and there are people you take 50 naira look at it squeeze it back take 20 naira oh it's the new one you squeeze it back you take out the old one and then you just say usher please come back and then you just drop it and do you know the painful part some of us are working class and you have not changed there are some amounts i cannot give god it's not pride is the truth i will be wicked how much do i spend on eating please talk to me how much do i spend on eating if i'm wearing a watch of 10 naira and i'm giving god offering of of 20 kobo am i stupid won't i sell the watch or carry it and drop it in an offering basket there are things you do that moves the heart of god make it a culture that kingdom investment is part of my life whether or not there is a giving program find a need create an opportunity and solve it and watch the god of heaven arise for you the third way we participate there's a man dr paul and gave the story one time i think he asked god to grant him grace he wanted to set up he owned different businesses but he wanted to set up one business specifically for the funding of the gospel and god answered his prayers and he set up the business in in hundreds of millions do you know 100 percentage me 100 percent of the profit 100 goes to the mission field that's an unkillable man i show you a man that no charm no charm can touch let me show you a scripture now we are going to pray very interesting scripture very very interesting scripture matthew 27 please matthew 27 from verse 62 we are reading down to chapter 28 verse 15 take notes please 27 verse 62 let me show you how satan wages war against the finances of believers because he understands the role of finances in advancing the kingdom ready this is the resurrection of jesus now the next day that followed the day of the preparation the chief priests and the pharisees came together unto pilate this is jesus being buried now and the chief priests and all the people who made sure he died next verse saying sir 
we remember that the deceiver you see the spirit of the antichrist because who is the deceiver in scripture satan now he's using a man to call jesus a name that only satan should be called the deceiver while he was yet alive said after three days i will rise again next verse command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure till the third day lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people he is risen from the dead so that the last error shall be worse than the first next verse Pilate said unto them ye have a watch go your way and make it as sure as you can right so they went and made the sepulcher sure sealing the stone and setting a watch next chapter in the end of the sabbath as it began to down you know the first day of the week came mary magdalene and so on and so forth next verse please and behold there was a great earthquake for the angel of the lord descended from heaven and came and rolled the stone next verse we're reading down please hurry up next verse verse four for fear of him the keepers did shake those who were guarding the tomb i'm going somewhere just follow me and they became as dead verse 5 and the angel answered and said to the woman fear ye not for i know that you seek jesus which was crucified he is not here for he is risen now listen the whole fight is because of this remember they went to um, Pilate and said we do not want this statement he is risen so go and seal the place are we together now for he said come see the place where the lord lay seven and go quickly go quickly evangelize quickly are we together go and take this good news and tell people what has happened for he is risen from the dead and behold he goeth before you in galilee there shall ye see him lo i have told you verse eight now listen and they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did wrong to bring his disciples word nine listen as they went to tell his disciples please follow me behold jesus met them saying all hail and they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him 10 then said jesus unto them be not afraid go and tell my brethren that go to galilee and you know they should go there and they shall see me next verse please now listen when they were going behold some of the watch those who were guarding they came into the city and showed the chief priests all the things that were done they went and said ah what you are trying to avoid has happened jesus has risen next verse and when they were assembled with the elders what happened and taken counsel they gave please read it they gave they took finances and gave people to say jesus did not resurrect next verse and saying his disciples came by night and stole him away they gave them money and said go and preach that should be the message it's true we know he has resurrected but we use money to silence the gospel and if this come to the governor's ears we will persuade him and we will secure you you will lose your job just make sure you that anything you must do jesus is not alive we have given you the money and so they took the money and did as they were taught now listen to the, the, the dangerous statement that follows and because of the power of that money and their loyalty to it and this saying is commonly reported among the jews until today that's the role money played there are jews today that are doubting because somebody collected money how much more that you release your money and say let them hear oh they need a translator no problem we can pay for it there must be a translator who will speak in hausa and we will pay for it satan paid men to say jesus is not alive he's paying nollywood he's paying hollywood he's paying the illuminati he's paying musicians satan is still paying men to say jesus is not alive 
but there is a generation of kingdom financiers who know the purpose of wealth it's not just for buying cars and bragging and proving to people in the village they are men and women look let me tell you they will supply financial resources beyond imagination do you know when i see great ministries that i know are serving the lord in truth begging for money begging on tv if you can help us if you don't help us we'll shut out do you know how bad i feel you've heard me say it again there are television stations brothers and sisters that need only a million dollars and it will write off their budget for an annum somebody this night is about to sleep with a billionaire by six o'clock tomorrow morning whether it's saturday or whenever they are crediting one million dollars to her account she's going to enjoy it for saying jesus did not resurrect that is the prayer point of a whole ministry as anointed as they are do you know part of my goal in life is to be extremely wealthy extremely wealthy and the reason is this i already have a catalog of ministries catalog catalog of ministries per month the same way you receive salary oh this is going to destiny makers international this is going to rema this is going to this this is going to capro this is going to this this is going to this ministry and you feel the joy and the excitement and you tell the devil i am paying to make sure your head is being stamped ah listen and then satan wants to kill you the anointing on your the recipient of your money will wake him in the night he will pray his heart out for you to remain do you know let me tell you sincerely i'm a very busy person but i found out subconsciously that there are people that when they call me i pick i'm serious it's not like i'm a biased person i just found out that it seemed like i placed a lot of priority and i had to trace and i found out that there were either people who were dangerous givers to my life or the house of god whether i knew them or not it's a principle it's a principle finance god's business and watch him defend you god will stand and defend you see let me tell you anytime things are not going well in your life carry a seed and run to a house the house of god or a man of god and just go and drop it there i'm giving you a big secret you have silent i don't care what the challenge is it has died these are mysteries in the kingdom those who know how to trade the secrets of the kingdom stand through life you look let me tell you pastor you can stand you are quarter to die is all that is nonsense there are mysteries you engage in i show you one of the mysteries the house of god the house of god your money is about to finish take some of it and run to the house of god drop it there you are you are it's a covenant you are connecting the supply with the house of god I, this is what i do oh oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. victory belongs to jesus victory belongs to him oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh victory belongs to jesus victory belongs to him Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. The greatest attack you will ever get in your life will be in your finances. Make a vow to advance the kingdom and see all hell break loose. Satan will prefer a church where the healing anointing is flowing than where finances is flowing because every other thing you have you cannot share is yours your salvation yours the only thing you can share is your resources let me tell you i've shared the vision here but let me say it again one time very clear vision i don't know how many years maybe two three years ago i was praying seriously praying in the spirit and all of a sudden my eyes were open and my ceiling just disappeared there's a big tree just in front of my place and when 
I looked at it, it was no longer a tree. I saw a big, the only way I can, you know a spirit that the Bible calls Leviathan, right? That looks like a sea creature, like, um, like a dinosaur, these kinds of creatures. Now, I saw it like that. It was a huge, the eyes, one of the eyes alone was like the size of my head. Two, red eyes, angry. The tail was, and not, it was like a snake connected to it. The tail was another creature and had its own life by itself. And the creature was looking at me. I was looking at it. It was looking at me. And this is what it told me. It says, so you think you can release financial blessings for God's people. Something like that. And that was it. I know these spirits. They know me. I've seen them. That's why he will not give you the job. Because God already knows that you have vowed that 20% of your salary will go for the kingdom and the devil will fight to make sure you don't get the job and you say what is it about my job it's not about the job it's about the agenda that the job will support yeah that's why satan frustrates people that's why you enter that exam hall and then he tries to get you blank it's not about the exam does satan need your script no He's trying to frustrate you because he sees the destiny and sees what will be advanced there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. You make up your mind that you are going to start giving. All of a sudden, you see the devil want to come up with all kinds of schemes. Listen, I preached last week's message as a word of hope for you because there is, there is a rising church I guarantee you brothers and sisters not everybody is greedy again there are men who have vowed some of you here I know as you are looking at me you can give your last pin for the kingdom I know and such kinds of people there is going to be a transfer of wealth in 2007 I woke up under a very strong visionary encounter and I had four words audibly audibly massive kingdom wealth transfer the Holy Ghost spoke to me that there is coming a wealth transfer not just because preachers are saying it it's an agenda where he will make one person like a nation where people will build businesses and the profit is not for them they don't need the money it's just for the kingdom it's just for the kingdom you come and see somebody building a church and you say why are they stopping you come and look at CGC and say look look how much does it take? You hear that they are, they are putting a... There was a time Ben Hinn was looking for over... I think he spends about a million dollars per week. That's his budget. A million dollars. About 450 million naira of Nigerian currency. On crusades and souls. Are you stupid to spend that much money just on souls? No, it's worth it, brothers and sisters. It's worth it. It's worth it. For as long as I live my money will preach it's not only my mouth my body will preach my mouth will preach my finances will preach and i i don't know how many of you want to join me but i'm on a project to stamp the gate of poverty territorially territorially i say it in the open and i say it in the public it will bring a lot of criticism a lot of things will happen but it is for his glory and for his kingdom when people are organizing programs and they sit down budgeting how much one million uh, how much do you have i have 10 naira how much do you have i have 250,000. and everybody starts coercing one another big men in many churches have become the holy spirit because they are the only ones who dictate how many pastors have to depend on people the welfare of so many pastors is so terrible look at their wives that's why many of you don't want to marry men of god when a man of god comes here i love the anointing but i, I don't love the state the, the persona is very discouraging that is changing say it's changing yeah. in the name of jesus it is changing i have seen books that should be written i have seen books that should go to territories do you know there are places in nigeria that they've not had the gospel i'm not talking of america in nigeria imagine if your finances was part i saw a picture i think on on, on the internet that touched me a little boy was on a scale almost dying uh, I think some of the in the, the the IDP camps there and the child was dying they were barely feeding him with whatever I, do. I don't know what that was dying how much is it how much is it David was a man who loved God he sat down one day and said how can I be in a palace 
and there is no house for God. He said, Lord, I know that you inhabit the heavens. You don't need a physical building. However, I cannot as a king sit down and there is no house for you. I will arise and build a house for you. God said, you have shed too much blood. I won't allow you. He said, no problem. I'm still not offended. I will gather the money. Let my son build it. There are men and women who will do that. There are men and women who will stand up and override budgets. Some of you, God will empower you by January. You come and say, how much is the budget for bus transport? From January till December. Just this is it. Just take it. See, creed. Nothing kills creed like giving in the house of God. The cure for greed is not counseling. The cure for greed is not saving. The cure for greed is not doing business. The cure for greed is doggedly pouring your resources. If you perish, you perish. I cannot tell you how many times in my life the Lord has instructed me to empty my account. Empty, zero, zero, zero. I don't mean zero, 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 home and abroad. What use is the money if his kingdom will not be advanced? When you see God blessing certain people, find out what they are doing. No, don't just say God is blessing them. Let me tell you, one day I was reading scripture and a revelation came. When I read the scripture, I found out that the last treasurer Jesus had was not very faithful. And I said, Lord, I suppose that there should be vacancy of treasurer. Make me one. Make me your treasurer. You know who a treasurer is? The money is not your own, but you pass it around. There will always be a portion for you, but you pass it around. A distribution channel. May God make someone hear that. Your current love for money will never give you finances. Many people think the secret to kingdom prosperity is business, investment, all of this. There is a place for that. But let me tell you, all those things are rubbish. When your heart is not, you must have a deal with God. It's a covenant. Let me show you a scripture. Psalm 122. We're rounding up. Psalm 122 verse 9. Give us an NIV please. Psalm 122 verse 9. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Psalm 122, verse 9. Are you stuck, maybe? Yeah. Okay, please just turn it so that we hurry up. It says, For the sake of thy house, let me just quote it. I desire thy prosperity. For the sake of thy house. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Give us an NIV. Do you have NIV? If you don't, that's all right. NIV says, I will seek your prosperity. So, Lord, I'm looking for this money not just for a name for myself. No. Brothers and sisters, how many houses can you live in? How many cars can you drive? No matter how greedy you are, this is all the stomach you have. Hmm. but the kingdom but souls if you like buy any kind of designers is finite is finite do you know what made the rich man a fool his wealth did not flow his wealth stayed keeping money and sitting on it is absolute foolishness it's a sign of fear and foolishness there is he that scattereth and yet increased there is he that withholding more than his meat and tends to poverty because of the house of the lord our god i will seek your prosperity seek your good romans chapter 10 i'm rounding up now verse 14 and 15 the scripture we read earlier on Romans chapter 10. How then, I'm rounding up now, shall they call upon him whom they have not believed? So you have to pray that the forces that have blind their minds to believe be warded off. And how shall they believe of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear 
without a preacher so you need a goer but the last dimension 15 how shall they preach except they be sponsored how shall they go except someone sends them as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things how shall the ministry be built except they be sent the gospel is free but the means to take it to the lost is very expensive brothers and sisters if i give you the running budget of koinonia per week many of you will be very surprised all of the things that happen per week alone you will not imagine but thank god for the means and the capacity please just imagine for one minute that as we are standing right now there are people outside to pay and we are stranded do you know what will happen to me as anointed as i've preached as much as you have been blessed because of the financial pressure on me i will be forced to do something else after preaching such a powerful message on souls i will now say sam please come out pastor alpha come out and now try to twist your hand because i have a budget to meet there are many men of god we call money mongers they are not money mongers the pressure of finances or ministry can make you sick so when you are blessed you are here seated there's light the sound system is working well everything after service you are going there's security standing everything is paid for you know the devil designed this system such that there's no free thing everything is paid for so that you will be limited but somebody shout the devil is a liar shout it the devil is a liar it's because of lack of finances that some of your loved ones have gotten into things you cannot believe are we together is because of there are some of you you are destined to marry a man of god god has already shown you but the day you went to go and meet your father your father said you are stupid there are business people all over his pastor you can go and bring and it's because of finances if you were blessed will he ask that kind of question if you you were blessed will you ask that kind of question brothers i prophesy to you in the name of jesus the grace that helps men to rise financially so that you can focus on more important things may it come on your life in jesus name listen it's a cause to spend your life working for money look up i want to talk to you i'm rounding up it's a cause i say it again to spend your life living from hand to mouth you will never have the time to advance the kingdom so satan make sure you have just enough most of the problems in families are money problems brothers and sisters who are talking of money with an assignment not all this money mongering thing i want to buy a car of one million dollars all that is unnecessary but that you come to a point where the only limitation in your life and ministry is the voice of the holy spirit not finances so for those of you who have been thinking every time you hear people talk of this finance no 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 please don't be carnal don't be carnal be discerning the kingdom of god has suffered more casualties as a result of lack of finances than it has as a result of demon spirits satan paid men and women our daughters are going around marrying all kinds of godless people simply because they have money there are many brothers here who are anointed their marriage will represent a continuity of the kingdom of god but the financial wherewithal is not there they love god but they do not have the resources that they can stand with the parents and because we live in a very carnal generation everybody wants show me where is the car he came with where is the bungalow he lives in so it's corrupting the purposes of god they now go and carry one senseless person who does not have any kingdom the spiritual compass in his head is not working completely zero alignment and they join you because of money it's a cost to live for this it's a cost that the primary assignment of your life will be to chase and look for this that's an assignment god did not give you that's an assignment god did not give anyone are you hearing what i'm saying my father is alive my mother is alive by the grace of god i say it in the open 
I bless them all the time and every time and they are happy I've seen peace in my family not just by fasting and prayers they are all retired there's nothing for them to do they pray for me they speak over my life I've had the privilege of of helping in ways little I have seen people smile through school because of the financial resources that came I've seen people move from scratch to where God will take them being blessed for the kingdom is real blessing I don't care what you are doing I don't care how much you are making if you cannot show me how the kingdom is benefiting from it you are wasting God's time be careful who you listen to and be careful the content of the spiritual information you are giving just because people are sincere may not mean their communications are balanced and accurate listen to what i'm telling you many people have become casualties of imbalanced spiritual communications jesus told us everywhere in his crusade demons came they were not afraid of jesus's own crusade demons they followed people they didn't wait outside and enter later on they came imagine jesus in a crusade praise the lord the people shouted hallelujah and the demons were still in them and they did not go when the world is not engaged it does not have any power to do anything a spirit can sit down the same way some of you are sitting quietly now as sincere and innocent as you are in the next few minutes you'll be surprised what will be happening in your own life and then you will see doors that have been closed opening like this then you will know that these doors were not closed by mistake and will not be opened by mistake everything good comes to everybody except you the moment is your turn something terrible happens a gentleman just sees you and say beautiful lady can i go and see your parents and that's the end of it his business goes down his life goes down everything crashes until he leaves you then he goes back up do you believe what i'm teaching you hmm. so while it is true that it's the holy spirit that ultimately creates conviction the manifestation of the miraculous in our lives and in the church you know when i came down you need to see the multitudes of people outside there are people sitting on the soccer way here my brothers and my sisters listen you went to school do you think human beings are stupid do you think someone will transport himself from another nation or another state some of you have not eaten since you came you came straight to sit down is god so wicked to sit down and allow you carry your trouble and go back oh not koinonia i welcome you to a place where god has given us the keys to deal with everything that is not of god i saw so many people standing outside the overflow by the roadside and compassion just gripped my heart i said imagine if i were one of these people and they were happily standing they were not complaining they just knew that if I may but touch the hem of his garment. My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you, forgive me if it sounds proud, but God has given us something. Let me tell you sincerely. We, we make bold and we ask the world to come and receive because he has given us something. I told you last week, you only knock a door that you don't have the key. When you have a key, you, don't, you stop knocking, you open. That's the same way your destiny will be opened. The Lord declared prophetically that this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. So in a meeting like this, if I were you, my heart is stayed on that word. Listen, let me tell you. Please listen. You see me teaching passionately, we are going to pray. When I teach like this, huh, I don't teach as a preacher. I come with my heart full of a burden. Are you get what i'm saying i come sincerely with my heart full of a burden because i love god but i love his people too my greatest satisfaction is not my personal progress is seeing the hand of god made manifest in your life when instructions are given when these spiritual things are given 
you must open your heart to believe them you see the the gospel works with the simplicity of childlike faith sometimes many of us carry this trado african pride and that's what stops us from receiving god wants to step in and touch you and you are wondering will god really touch me you know my peculiar problem you know the name are you the first to be in trouble god knows how to deliver the righteous from trouble let me tell you this i don't care what the situation is but i want us to agree that this god of heaven ah uh, the king of the universe that he will arise for you tonight you see let me tell you this my prayer this year when i was fasting and praying this year i prayed a prayer i said lord some people don't know what a testimony is give them one they only know how other people's testimonies the lord did this for this but they have never had a testimony themselves the day you have a real testimony yourself it will humble you you wouldn't know whether to stand or to kneel down that's what i'm praying for you for today a testimony testimony when the hand of god comes in a meeting and upon a man you see let me tell you this the supernatural is not just falling down and roll you can fall down and roll from left to right and stand up and go back and not testify the proof that god came is the testimony that follows the testimony the testimony of jesus the testimony of jesus apostle i came here barren march miracle service by april miracle service i'm one month pregnant that's a testimony listen come david down when the devil oppresses your life destroys everything about you he uses men as a canvas to write a letter to god that your dominion and your royalty is still being contested with oppression is a letter sent through men to god the highest of god's creation the devil writes upon your life i will destroy the family and i will make sure everyone begs like you send a um, a chat send and then a miracle is god's reply that god writes through you and says in spite of this i am still on the throne It's true. I believe in miracles. I honestly and truthfully believe in miracles. I believe in principles. I believe in mysteries. But I believe in divine intervention. My brothers and my sisters, God can shorten a man's journey. What then is the excellency of his mercy? Listen god is a god of process i agree listen carefully god is a god of principles i agree he will not excuse laziness and he will not excuse spiritual laxity but let me tell you when blind Bartimeo said thou son of david have mercy on me the mercy of god can shorten the journey of a man if you get born again at age 40 do you know how long it takes to know god genuinely know god you don't read your bible in two months and know god but there's something the spirit of god can do and give you a solid encounter that in six months you have caught up with the spiritual level of more than five years how about restoration your parents started building from 1999 till today it has stopped at linter level right there you went to school and said i'm going to pay it and finish everything the day you said you pay it you almost died i made a vow with my life that i would believe this word and i will engage it life is too risky to be careless with spiritual laws engage it don't wait until the devil kills your life and your children before you know many believers learn too late let me say this and thank god for his mercy you will receive but do you know there are some of you the lord spoke to you about coming here since last year you've been arguing and giving reasons and excuses your situation would not have been that bad 
but thank God because although Lazarus was three days dead Jesus is still the resurrection and the life not only the healer when I prayed I told the Lord I said please Lord give people a testimony real testimonies I was blind now I see God did something in three weeks to my finances. Everybody see what God can do. God transformed my family. God turned me around and did something for me. I don't doubt your love for God, but there must be proofs of that love. There must be proofs of that love. Somebody shout, Lord, give me an evidence. Say, Lord, give me an evidence. I believe in proofs John chapter 4 and verse 48 I'll begin to pray shortly bless you 4 verse 48 he says and Jesus said unto him who was speaking here Jesus except ye see signs and wonders ye will not believe how true how true that there are so many people in your family until they see what the power of God does in your life they will never believe your God they think God is one of those things this is a charm this is this this is that and then God is one of them but the day like Dagon all those gods fall before the Almighty God and you return back with a solid evidence let me tell you that day like Pharaoh your loved ones who confess that this your God is God Are we together so I want you to be serious don't sit down and just look around and say ah, who is going to receive let me clap for him no it's an insistence it's a desperation except you see miraculous signs you shall not believe Luke chapter 5 we we'll read the first 11 verses that miracles can help to create solid convictions Charles and Francis Hunter powerful evangelists they've gone to be with the Lord now they wrote a book that a miracle is worth a thousand words I believe them I believe them the world is tired of our noise and our stories they want to see a demonstration and a manifestation of the reality of the life and the power of God it says and it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God he stood by the lake of Gennesaret next verse please and saw two sheep standing by the lake but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets uh-huh we're reading to 11 and he entered into one of the ships which was Simon's and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship next verse now when he had left speaking he said unto Simon launch out into the deep and let your nets for a drought five what happened Simon answering said master we have toiled all night in other words he said Lord look you are not the first to pray for me a man of God prayed for me in Zaria another man prayed in wherever you know so God is one of those things you bless me oh yeah do it master we have toiled all night not for a few hours all night night vigil looking for a fish and did not catch even one it says nevertheless at thy word I will let down the net six and when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their next seven and they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them and they came and filled both ships miracles can create relationships that you get a miracle and partners that were minding their business you can say come and join me who will not follow someone with results who will not let me tell you the bible talks about a wealthy man and um, how did he put it now a poor man that we even with much entreaties they will run away from him there are many people that come from where we come from and will pass us as if they don't know us because you represent shame and anything that looks like Ichabod, the departure of the glory, men will usually find a way to excuse it from. But the Bible says you will be called Beulah and Hephzibah. 
a delight and they came and filled both ships so that they began to sing verse 8 when simon peter saw this look at this this is what miracles do he fell down at jesus's knees saying depart from me i'm a sinful man was a sermon preached a serious miracle happened and that miracle created conviction the same way some of you have been laughing at men of god sincerely and laughing at everything that has to do with the power of god and by the time we'll be sharing the grace tonight you will stand and go back quietly not talking to anybody and say i've seen today i heard with my ears like job but i've seen with my eyes that god is real and his power is real his grace is real nine for he was this is what led to the repentance he was so men can be astonished to repentance that they look at your life and say promise when did this happen when did god lift you was it not last year together we were discussing and you tell him there is a name god is called the, the lifter of men the lifter of men let me tell you my brothers and my sisters run away from anybody who tell you results don't matter they do they do out of the abundance of the evidence of the workings of god in your life the nations will bow to your god they will never bow to you just because you are talking man of god hear me no results you have mp pews there's there's no way around it there must be an evidence a serious evidence when john questioned the messiahship of jesus he didn't answer with a statement he said go and tell john what you have seen the blind see the deaf hear the dead are raised and the gospel is preached to the meek and then he says blessed is he that is not offended so the moment there are no miracles the messiahship of the christ is questioned john himself the one who ordained jesus said go and ask him is he the messiah miracles confirm that jesus is the messiah god is not a herbalist he's not a herbalist that is ahead of other herbalists no wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him a name there are people who have names politicians have names businessmen have names. captains of industry gatekeepers of mountains have names but my brothers and my sisters there is a name it says there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved and it's in that name tonight that we will wreak havoc in the kingdom of darkness the miraculous manifests the glory of god and causes people to not only believe god but to trust god john chapter 2 and verse 11 the first miracle of jesus what we call the miracle at the wedding of the cana of galilee he turned water to wine the bible says this beginning of miracles this beginning of not this beginning of sermons not this beginning of discussions this beginning of miracles did jesus in cana of galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him believed on him we believe in the god that heals and saves and delivers that's why we kept the seats for you that's why we we knew you would come because the hand of god will bring you and we knew you would not be disappointed brothers and sisters there is a god in heaven god is not a herbalist don't let your pain demean him he is still the king of the universe the whole world lieth in wickedness acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and he went about doing good 
it takes the manifestation of the power of God to do good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him for God was with him for God was with him we're going to pray you have to convince yourself it's going to be a quick walk and we're going to cry to God and say Lord whatever I carried from my house whatever I carried from my place of work that I brought before you it should not return back with me it should be clear and evident that I met the Lord Jesus Christ it should be clear and evident right where you are sitting you will soon stand up but right where you are sitting i'd like you to talk to the lord please be serious and be desperate lord i have come to you i've come to you i've come to you i've come to you my life must be changed my finances must be changed my destiny must be changed lord i've come to you as a pastor i've come to you as a prophet as an apostle there has to be greater oil upon my life lord i hear you are a restorer restore me online please make sure you are praying those outside make sure you are praying there is a god that answers prayer when the lord turned again the captivity of zion it says we were like them that dream and our mouths were filled with laughter and said they among the hidden the lord had done great things for them it says the lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity like the streams of the negev turn again our captivity there is a god that can turn around the captivity of men pray doesn't matter where you are seated doesn't matter where you are connecting from the power of God is able to save to the uttermost father I'm praying that infirmity in my body must leave this night. That financial situation must die this night. That oppression that has kept my family down. Did the Bible not say this is a victory that overcometh the world, even our faith? A miracle worker, God is a glorious God, God is a miracle worker, God is a glorious
You're a miracle shortly and I'll begin to minister by the Spirit your own assignment is to receive you have come let me tell you something there is enough grace to solve whatever challenge it is that has plagued you yours is to believe in the power of God it says if you will believe you will see the glory of God if you will believe you will see the glory of God if you will believe you will see the glory of God. If you will believe, you will see the glory of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A lady, the power of God is going to come upon a lady outside. Please carry her and bring her now. There is a lady I'm seeing. I just saw light from in here. Write the power of God upon that lady. Please bring her. Please bring her. And then bring the someone on this row. I'm seeing like, like a smoke just going round. And it's like it's locating someone. The power of God is going to come on someone. Please pick the person and bring the person out. You reign. You reign. Hello. outside I crush the hand of captivity over your life in the name of Jesus Christ I crush the hand of captivity over your family in the name of Jesus I saw a lot of oppression over the life of this lady and in the name of Jesus we silence the voice of wickedness we silence the voice of wickedness hold on please the Lord is showing me something right now. I saw this while I ministered in Abel Kuta. I started seeing snakes on the ground. Snakes on the ground. And that's what I'm seeing right now. And this is, this is the manifestation of a spirit. And there are many families that are under this yoke. Whether you believe it or not, just let me minister to you. I'm declaring right now, the power of God is going to start coming on people that represent those families. Bring them out. You are not shouting anything. You are not saying anything. Bring them out. I'm speaking by the Spirit. The Word of God has been declared. There are families. I'm seeing serpents, snakes, snakes. Inside and outside, bring them. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. And the captives of the mighty, by the fire of the Holy Spirit, I judge those spirits wherever you are, represented in anyone here, represented in anyone here, I speak by the hand of God. Hello, bring them out. I'm still on that case. The power of God is still locating people. I'm seeing snakes. Na 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 na
In the name of Jesus, I'm still praying. We are not doing too many things tonight. We are going to the root of many people's challenges. I'm saying it again. There are still spirits. And I speak by the anointing of the Spirit of God. Wherever they are, overflow one, two, three, across the road. I'm declaring judgment, judgment upon those spirits. The fire of God is coming upon you right now. Whether you are standing for yourself or for your family, bring them out. There is no escape for when his voice comes, they come out from their hiding place. Hallelujah. Now listen, there are people, I'm seeing something that looks like a knife being inserted in people and I'm seeing people beginning to run, just run. When you see people doing that, hold them and bring them. The Lord is bringing deliverance. That one is not speed. This one is not the prayer for speed. I'm just telling you as the Lord is showing me. Right now I decree and declare. I don't know those that the Lord is cutting them free from every kind of diabolism. But I stretch my hands by the Spirit. I command judgment on every force. Judgment on every power. In the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of God is coming upon them. You will begin to see them run around. Just running. It's, it's, it's not a, a making of their own. It's by the power of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving me an instruction right now. Now we are ready to shout. Listen. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing what looks like a grave. And the Lord is saying he's delivering families from the power of the grave. In the name of Jesus Christ and at the count of three, any family, whether territorially or by whatever connection, is tied to the spirit of the grave. I'm declaring at the count of three, as you shout Jesus, the power of God is setting you free. One, two, three. The spirit of the grave. The spirit of the grave. The spirit of the grave. I curse you by the God of heaven. The spirit of the grave. I curse you by the God of heaven. Just follow me this night. Now, I'm praying for all those in front. They came out because the Lord showed something. I declare by the power of God that the legal access of darkness over your life is broken and at the count of three I speak to these spirits release everything you have taken from these families one two go 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 out of their lives out of their destinies out of their lives out of their destinies 
I command a release. I command a release. I command a release. Release breakthroughs. Release open doors. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Please just pay attention and let God help you. You came here tonight to receive. Listen to me. The Lord is ministering to me that there are people you dare not go to bed. Someone must come in your sleep and try to sleep with you. Or it may happen once in a while. This is a strange oppression of darkness. And I declare, I'm praying right now. I'm seeing fire all over this place because there are many people that is the root cause of many oppressions in your life. At the count of three, you will shout that name again. That is above every other name. And some of you will feel something leaving you immediately. I declare that all these spirits that molest the saints and manipulate dreams and visions, at the count of three, let there be emancipation. One, two, get ready. Three. I command those spirits, go now. Strangers of the night. Strangers of the night. Kebrakatakata. Rekatakata. Help that gentleman. Strangers of the night. Reketepe rekata. Embreketeteketekete. Bring them out. Strangers of the night. I curse you by the God of heaven. Molesting the saints. Planting sicknesses in their bodies. Hello, Kim Madonna. a certain family here I'm seeing that they tied the family to the covenant of a stone something that has to do with a stone I don't know what that means and in what tribe but I'm seeing a covenant that has to do with being tied to a stone I don't know if it's for protection or for whatever but in the name of Jesus I'm praying right now by the power of the Holy Spirit that any fraternity with the elements of Christ let it be broken now in the name of Jesus. Help them, please. Let it be broken now in the name of Jesus. Fraternities with stones and elements and strange fires of the night. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. The mysteries behind the strange hardship of people. The mysteries behind the oppression of people. Oppression of families. Doors, doors are opening. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. Doors, doors. Some of you will feel fire on your hands. Fire on your hands. Doors are opening, two leaf gates in the spirit, fire on your hand. You will know by the fire that comes to your hand. I'm seeing fire coming on people's hands. That's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. Doors opening, you must testify. Doors opening, doors opening, doors opening. Edge long doors, edge long doors that have been closed for many years. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord stand just at the back of this young man. Please shift, my friend. These four ladies, one, two, three, four. I'm seeing an anointing on you people. One, two, three, four. 
I don't know what it is that God is taking out, but I'm seeing like chains being taken from your feet, chains being removed. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. I saw an angel stand there, chains being taken up from your feet. In the name of Jesus Christ, chains being taken from off your feet. Listen, let me explain something to you. This is not just some disorganized jamboree. God is turning the destinies of men out. You will see people return with testimonies because there are forces. Emmanuel. I'm hearing the name Emmanuel. Who is that? Emmanuel. Please don't make the place rowdy, Emmanuel. We're going to pray for the sick now. There are four of you I'm seeing here. You have the call of God upon your life, but there are strange altars that are holding you down. In the name of Jesus, I lose you now. I lose you by the force of the Spirit. I lose you. I release your ministry. I lose you. I release your ministry. Hear me. I'm speaking by the Spirit. I lose you. I release your ministry. I stand by this apostolic anointing. I lose you. If I be called of God, I lose you. I lose you from these forces. I lose you from these yokes. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are men that can be alive, let me tell you, but they are dead in the spirit. Emmanuel, I'm praying. We don't have time to minister individuals, individually, but I'm praying for you. The Lord is breaking delay from four of the families with Emmanuel. No, no, whilst I mention your case, the power of God is coming upon you. You will know it's your case. I stretch my hands now among the Emmanuels and the people delay 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 there is an anointing coming now is crushing that spirit just because I'm praying for Emmanuel does not mean it will not come upon you in the name of Jesus delay delay God is visiting delay broken by the Spirit of God Please help them so they don't injure themselves. He came to set the captives free. To set the captives free. Hold on. This young lady, lift your hands. This, this, yes, you. Lift your hands. I'm stretching my hands towards you. I don't know what it is that I saw, but I saw something like smoke. The other one, the smaller one with white. Yes. I just saw something like smoke coming out of you. And the Lord is saying this is oppression for many years. That has something to do with your abdominal region. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, let that oppression go. Let it leave you. Let it go. Let it leave you right now. In the name of Jesus there is a woman now i'm going to pray for people generally but i don't know how we'll do this there is a barren woman in overflow three barren woman trusting god for the fruit of the womb please if if you can allow the woman to run and come god is instructing me to lay my hands on her because it's time for her to carry her child overflow three please let her run and come Ya bone na kao Sujata ne na kao Sirkin salam Sirkin abjana Ya bone na kao Maureen, 
I'm hearing a name Maureen. 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 What is your name? Lift your hands. Where are you from? Shout Jesus loud as you can. Jesus! Let the power of witchcraft over your life be broken. My dear, look at me. Look at me. Shout Jesus. Jesus! I crush that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. And the man you see in your dream, in the name of Jesus, may you never see that man again. Please make sure you, they don't, why is mama here? Is she Maureen? This woman, I, I'll pray for you. That woman, come, madam. Is that your daughter? Come, madam. Where are you coming from, ma? Let her come. Sir? Where are you coming from? I'm from area C. Area I'm C? No, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. Mama, you are a sincere woman. But if I did not pray for you, huh? It's a bike that will kill you from the market in an accident. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this woman with a leather of potato and a bike man just comes to jam her together with a truck and they just say survive by that the woman is dead. I'm not a prophet of doom, mama. Please don't be afraid. In the name of Jesus Christ, hold my hands. I extend your life by the power of the Holy Spirit that the plague of death. See, let me prophesy upon someone here anyone here that the hand of death is upon you to see that you will not see the end of this year i'm praying by the spirit now i'm praying by the spirit and in the name of jesus anyone that the spirit of death is haunting anyone being haunted by the spirit of death i command that it is crushed now in jesus name what is your name my dear Maureen, come. You will look at a beautiful lady like this. But in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing a human being but no face. No face like this. I'm just seeing a blank face like this. Let me tell you what this means. It's a yoke of bad luck. That people stand and cannot bless you. You have what it takes to be blessed and rewarded. The lady on yellow, lift your hands. There's the call of God upon your life. There is a prophetic grace that is upon you. And the Lord is saying you are stepping into it right now. I stretch my hands to you. Right now in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bring you into that grace. I'm still praying for her. In the name of Jesus I declare. I'm seeing fire coming upon you right now. And that fire will unlock a dimension of the prophetic. In the name of Jesus Christ. bad luck listen i'm going to hold her but a different person is the one that will receive before i pray for her this is just allow me do my my mad thing hold my hand in the name of jesus i'm not praying for her i'm praying for someone now by the spirit of the lord but the lord is saying i should hold her as i pray for the person lord in the name of jesus this yoke of bad luck i'm speaking now please help them this yoke of bad luck by the power of the Holy Spirit where good things don't seem to happen to you in the name of Jesus let it be broken now 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 now let me pray for you be free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit I take away this that I'm seeing and in the name of Jesus, you have an identity in the spirit that brings honor, that brings grace and dignity. In Jesus' name I pray. Where are these ones? We're going to pray for the sick. Your name is Maureen? Are you married? You are married? Yes, sir. But you don't have a child? Yes, sir. From Overflow 3? Yes, sir. Where's your husband? not here it's not but well, you're married yes sir. come and stand here and watch the god of wonders i don't know you madam from overflow three you are from overflow three you are trusting god for the fruit of the womb why did you come your name is maureen 
What do you do, madam? Hold on. I'm a businesswoman. You're a businesswoman. Where? I used to sell at uh, young, um, Random Kanu. But right now, the business is... Scattered. Do you know why I'm asking you? No. I must pray for you. Because this thing is not only you. There is nobody doing well in your family. Your entire family. This is what I'm seeing. It's a spirit. Huh? Except you open up something and miss. Even physical money used to get missing from you. You will keep money and count it. And found, find out that it's not what you kept. Is that true? If I'm lying, just say I'm lying. Where are you from? I'm from Enugu. Anambra state. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the state Anambra. I'm seeing deliverance coming for people from that state now. I'm seeing deliverance coming for people from that state. Anyone, usually when God shows me this, anybody who is from that state connected by blood, the power of God begins to come upon them to bring deliverance. It's a sign and a wonder. I'm declaring right now in the name of Jesus that anyone who is from that state and that region and there is any force and yoke that is fighting you be free right now in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus please help them be free in the name of Jesus Anambra state be free in the name of Jesus I'm still seeing the map in my vision be free in the name of Jesus my friend that young man holding his hands shout Jesus from where you are the yoke is broken I cast it out of your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ madam I need to pray for you don't feel bad look at me you insulted a woman some years ago and the woman told you it will not be well with you it was like a joke truly the thing followed you this is what God is showing me now I'm not a prophet of doom I'm going to pray for you I don't know if it, the woman annoyed you or what is it you insulted the woman and she stood and told you that it will not be well because what you were saying about her was not what she did hold my hands the Bible says even the lawful captive shall be delivered let me tell you my brothers and my sisters the scourging tongues of men the scourging tongues of men except you know where you stand a cause causeless shall not stand but if there is a cause it will stand though it will stand are we together now I will pray where are your siblings madam hi this woman no oh. you are not here alone where are the rest call them just stand where you call what is their name educate quickly please and Victor. Educate, come. And and who? Victor, that is and my Victor. Son. Yes. Victor is not your brother. Victor is a small my boy. Son, yes. Where is he? He's Let him come. Because I'm seeing the boy, you are saying Victor is a little boy. Ah. Uh, are you married? Yes. You have a son? Yes. Your son's name too is Victor. Yes, he's the one I'm is the boy that you are talking yes. about? You said your brother. No, HK is my brother. Then Let the boy come. Son. As young as that boy is too, if I don't pray for him, he will start stealing. Eh? There are two boys, small boys that will be delivered from this spirit. No matter where you keep anything, they must steal it. We are not condemning people. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. God is delivering people. To the pure, all things are pure. Nobody is calling any family a bad family. But this is a place where God is visiting people. Where is the person, please? Come, celebrate him as he comes. You're welcome, sir. I will pray for you. God is going to turn your family around. This is the little boy. My friend, how are you? Come. How old are you? 11 years old you love Jesus yes sir. I will pray for you how can a nice boy like this and the next thing start picking things do you know let me tell you these small children that steal are not thieves it's just that either by carelessness or lack of discernment 
it was not dealt with because most of what they steal they don't need it that's how you know it's a spirit are we together yes that's why it's important that parents lay hands on their children and speak and prophesy don't assume they will be spiritual by default my friend let me pray for you father thank you for this adorable young man and this guy has a great destiny you see this boy i'm looking at a star rising as i'm laying my hands on him this is what the lord is showing me in the name of jesus christ i pray for you you will be a great man by the power of the holy spirit hold this woman the anointing of the spirit is coming on her in the name of jesus christ sir what do you do a medical sales representative you are a medical sales representative medical sales representative can i pray for you you are a sincere person now eh? but this thing they are just forces that want to destroy your family i will pray for you huh april may june it will look like you held a charm the way god will turn your life around you believe it in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you madam come the power of god is coming upon you in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare this thing that i'm seeing tied to your waist i lose it right now by the power of the holy spirit be set free now in the name of jesus christ you are the one trusting god for a child come how long have you been married three years three years no child you too are you married five years five years four months no child child doctor said after two surgeries they said my husband cannot impregnate me he did surgery twice don't cry jesus is here huh you went through two surgeries where is your husband he's at home, he's at home. don't cry where are you from where are you coming from Graceland. you see th these are the things that sometimes worry my spirit imagine the kind of trouble that this family will go through sometimes we take some things for granted imagine the advices someone now will recommend and say go to a herbalist go and do this and don't cry my sister two surgeries you went through mm. my head now i'm seeing something being removed from your stomach look at what is happening to her yes she went through two surgeries In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that spirit that says your husband cannot impregnate you. In the name of Jesus, I set you free now. Madam, I set you free now. I'm praying for the rest, but I set you free now. Hold my hands, come. In the name of Jesus. I declare supernatural miracle for you now release this woman now as I'm praying for you I'm praying for your husband wherever he is according to the time of life may you return with your miracle children it's over in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God my dear let me why is this woman here you are married to madam no child how long four years and um, five months four years five months where are you coming from Jigawa state from Jigawa state please come oh dear God is dealing with these issues because he has declared that it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness is fruitfulness from any dimension any dimension look at this woman look at these women crying I may never understand what it means for a woman to not be able to take in I think is the equivalent of a man not be able to provide for his family that you come back home and watch your wife and children and they say that they were hungry and you are clueless about where bread will come from my sister please don't cry who brought you here you came alone Sarah. Sarah. Huh? 
Oh dear. Put your hand on your stomach. Is she a Christian? She's, she's a Christian. Okay. It doesn't matter whether you are a Muslim or Christian. The Lord, everybody the Lord healed in the Old Testament. He healed them and gave them an opportunity to hand their lives over. You just act like this just to show honor and respect people. I will pray for you. There is a name that is above every other name. And in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon your womb. And I declare the embargo of barrenness, five years barrenness. Let it be broken right now. Look at this. Let it be broken right now. I'm seeing something being loose from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. And then I'm seeing you coughing. You are now beginning to cough. This is what I'm seeing. I don't know what it is that I'm seeing. But I'm seeing something come out of you. And you are coughing. Coughing something out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be gone now. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. What's your name? Blessing. Blessing. Where's your husband? He's not here. He's not here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't care what the medical report is. We agree as a family of faith that this our dear sister carries her miracle child now. I decree and declare according to the time of life, return with your child. Whatever needs to be corrected in this body now, I correct it by the power. Ah, I'm seeing something like fire burning already on your stomach. This is what I'm saying. You will feel it now physically like fire on your stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a, look at what is happening to her. A correction, a correction of whatever is wrong. In the name of Jesus. Why are they here? Fruit of the womb. Uh, we are not praying at random. We will pray. Madam, I will pray for you. Where are you coming from? Huh? Nasarawa State. Nasara State. Are you alone? No, I'm alone. You came with who? Only me. Only you. Come. Just the woman. I will pray for her. We have to pray for the sick. But how many of you have seen what God is doing here? Listen, you see, if you love the Lord and you see God attacking... In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord just showed me something now I'm seeing the head of a human being on top of something that looks like a shrine on fire and the Lord is telling me that this is one of the mysteries behind the captivity of many people I decree in the name of Jesus Christ father whatever has had to do with blood that is responsible for the bewitchment and the plague that comes upon people in the name of Jesus by the mercy of God let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now, there be freedom now. I'm seeing a family of one two three four five six graduates nobody's employed six graduates you are all graduates nobody has a job who is that person six graduates please listen to the instruction so that you don't just jump out six graduates no job not one person has a job i want to pray for you you're the one for the fruit of the womb huh i have to pray for you i'm seeing something in your stomach have you gone to the hospital you've spoken with a doctor don't be embarrassed I'm seeing something growing in your stomach and this is not a baby I will pray for you because if I don't pray for you you will have to go through serious surgery to even allow the baby stay based on what the Lord is showing me and I'm going to pray for you where are you coming from madam Kano. Kano. is your husband here is your husband here yes where is he? Husband, sir, please come. There's Daddy something the Lord wants to do in your family. Don't worry, he's, he's here, he's coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. God bless you. I want to pray for you. You came from Kano too? You came from Kano too, sir? 
I'm going to pray for you. Thing come out of you. Opportunity to hand their lives. Opportunity to hand their lives over. You just act like this just to show honor and respect people. I will pray for you. There is a name that is above every other name. And in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon your womb. And I declare the embargo of barrenness, five years barrenness. Let it be broken right now. Look at this. Let it be broken right now. I'm seeing something being loose from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. And then I'm seeing you coughing. You are now beginning to cough. This is what I'm seeing. I don't know what it is that I'm seeing. But I'm seeing something come out of you. And you are coughing. Coughing something out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be gone now. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. What's your name? Blessing. Blessing. Where's your husband? He's not here. He's not here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't care what the medical report is. We agree as a family of faith that this our dear sister carries her miracle child now. I decree and declare according to the time of life return with your child whatever needs to be corrected in this body now i correct it by the power ah, i'm seeing something like fire burning already on your stomach this is what i'm saying you will feel it now physically like fire on your stomach in the name of jesus christ let there be a look at what is happening to her a correction a correction of whatever is wrong in the name of jesus why are they here fruit of the womb uh, we are not praying at random we we'll pray madam i will pray for you where are you coming from huh nasarawa state nasarawa state are you alone no I'm you came with who only me only you come just the woman i will pray for her we have to pray for the sick but how many of you have seen what god is doing here listen you see if you love the lord and you see god attacking In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord just showed me something now I'm seeing the head of a human being on top of something that looks like a shrine on fire and the Lord is telling me that this is one of the mysteries behind the captivity of many people I decree in the name of Jesus Christ father whatever has had to do with blood that is responsible for the bewitchment and the plague that comes upon people in the name of Jesus by the mercy of God let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now, there be freedom now. I'm seeing a family of one two three four five six graduates nobody's employed six graduates you are all graduates nobody has a job who is that person six graduates please listen to the instruction so that you don't just jump out six graduates no job not one person has a job i want to pray for you you're the one for the fruit of the womb huh i have to pray for you i'm seeing something in your stomach have you gone to the hospital you've spoken with a doctor don't be embarrassed I'm seeing something growing in your stomach and this is not a baby I will pray for you because if I don't pray for you you will have to go through serious surgery to even allow the baby stay based on what the Lord is showing me and I'm going to pray for you where are you coming from madam Kano. Kano. is your husband here is your husband here yes where is he? Husband, sir, please come. There's Daddy something the Lord wants to do in your family. Don't worry, he's, he's here, he's coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. God bless you. I want to pray for you. You came from Kano too? You came from Kano too, sir? I'm going to pray for you. Number one, God is going to give you the fruit of the womb. Number two, God is restoring your finances. 
You hear what I'm saying? Amen. God is restoring your finances. Amen. This is a serious issue. As you are here coming now, the financial trouble you are into is only God that can bring you out. Amen. Is that true? God is going to help you. Madam, put your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ, why are they here? Six graduates, no job. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, by your mercy and by your grace, let there be a sign and a wonder in the life of this woman. Just keep her down. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, everything that is wrong be corrected now. In the name of Jesus, sir, please can you hold my hands? In the name of Jesus, I speak over your finances. There is a grace that can restore, and I release that grace upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, let me talk to you, and then we'll pray for the sick. You are the, both of you, where are you coming from? You are here in Zaria? Yes. And you are, yes, I know your face. Six graduates, no job. Yes, sir. Including you? Yes, sir. Come. No. But there are six Nigeria people. Now. Yes. But there's no job for yes, them. Sir. Can we agree that God will give them a job? Yes, sir. And you too? Yes, Let's pray. Come. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, there is an anointing that is coming upon you, eh? And is for the sake of your family. In the name that is above all names, I release this grace upon you. And I pray, let the embargo of joblessness be broken now. Even on both of you, I use you as a point of contact to pray now. Something is leaving this lady's hand. You. Something is leaving your hand. I cast that yoke now. In the name of Jesus, your hand is a symbol of your productivity. And I declare in the name of Jesus, let there be liberty. Liberty for all of you. Liberty. I open the doors of jobs. In Jesus' name I pray. Why is he here? You are a graduate. Six. From where, please? From Abuja. Abuja. Yes. You are a, st a school of ministry yes. student. Madam, let me talk to you. Where are you coming from? Nasarawa State. Are you married? Bring the person that begins to laugh in the spirit. The hand of God is coming upon someone. The Bible says the shouts of joy and victory will not depart from the tents of the righteous. Please bring the person. Let's save time. Father, I establish this victory over this lady's life. The oppression over your life and your family is broken now and broken forever. Broken now and broken forever. We don't have time our time is gone but the lord is showing me a very serious vision of a lady that entered a relationship with a gentleman and left him and the guy vowed i'm seeing this guy carry not you now i'm seeing this guy carry a photo and taking it to a herbalist in kaduna state hello kim matona name has been taken for any diabolic activity I stand by the hand of God whoever took it there judgment comes on them now whoever took it there judgment comes on them now whoever took it there judgment comes on them now Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. I'm still praying. Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now.
This is what the Lord showed me. Carry the name of the lady and kept it there. That number one, no decent man will ever come and ask her out. And number two, she will never give birth. This is what I'm seeing. Who shall say a thing and it will come to pass? That when God has not declared it so. I reverse every pronouncement over anyone here in the name of Jesus. I want to pray a prayer. Please forgive me for tonight's miracle service. The way God is taking us. I want to pray. Shade and doctor, please come. The Lord wants to end an old issue in your family. Please come. This is what the Lord is showing me. This thing I'm seeing is as old as more than 60, 70 years. The Lord is opening my eyes to see now. Please, I want to pray for you. Those under the anointing, help them. Please, I'm just using two of you as a point of contact. But I'm seeing a spirit. This is an ancient spirit. The way this thing works is that men rise. The moment they get to the zenith of anything they are doing, they must die. This is the spirit I'm seeing. Please listen. I'm not... I'm just using them and I'm ministering the way God is showing me. These are not the only families with this thing, but the Lord is saying I should deal with it now. Provided you have not gotten to the pinnacle, you, no death will touch you. But the moment you touch that bar, you are going down. And the Lord wants to destroy it because God is using both of you to start a new program in the family. I will follow the lion. I will follow the lamb. I will follow the lion. I will follow the lamb. I, I, I believe in the lion. I believe in the lamb. Bring that little girl, as small as that girl you see is. This girl you are seeing is a deliverer of our family. As small as you are seeing this, this little girl. Because this girl stands as an altar of righteousness over her family. And as small as she is, the devil wants to kill her. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, I use this, my dear daughter, as a point of contact. That everything that is not the planting of God, I scatter it now in the name of Jesus. May God use this, our precious daughter, and truly may she be the deliverer of our family. In the name of Jesus. A lady is going to start running because I'm about to pray over a spirit that is in her family. And that spirit is going to start driving her to run away. So I'm telling you in advance, you are going to see the person stand up to start running away. It's, it's not even this lady I'm talking about. This is somebody in the crowd. You will not even, you will not be in control of yourself. It's a spirit because I'm about to rebuke it right now. Mm. Father, I thank you for the Bonire family and by extension the various families. The altar that sits upon this family. Even the lawful captives, Kemarato Zakata, shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives, I break that yoke now. I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood. That ancient yoke that brings down great men over this family, be broken. I open up the door of increase. Rise to the zenith of your profession. I forbid the spirit of death. Once and for all. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, an issue that is age long. Let me tell you this. A mighty deliverance has happened to this family. This thing I'm telling you, fought their grandparents, fought their parents. And if not delivered now, will still fight them.
if there's anyone here that this same spirit works in your family, you rise to a position and crash down. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three, let fire land upon such individuals and scatter that altar, scatter that altar forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. It took words to establish the covenant that brought this family in trouble. Now I declare to you, a new order starts in your lineage. A new order starts in your family. Where children live long and they become successful. And that every embargo of witchcraft, once and for all, is broken in the name of Jesus. Madam, I can pray for you now. Where did you say you are from? Nasarawa just State. just keep her somewhere there or bring a chair and keep her. You are not from Nasarawa State. You stay in Nasarawa yes, State. Yes, Where yes. are you from? Ebony State. Ebony State. Ebony State. I want to pray for you. Am I wasting your time, please? One encounter with the power of God is enough to turn your life around. My friend, this man wearing um, you. Yes. Did you come alone? Who did you come with? Where is your wife? Come. It's time for God to change your life. Stand up, stand up. Please stand up, stand up. Where are you coming from? From campus, yes, sir. You are from campus, yes, sir. What do you do? I am lecturer in the university. You are a lecturer. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Ah. Sir, you are not supposed to be at this level now. You are a very brilliant man. You, but there, you are intelligent. I don't know you, all, but you are a brilliant man. It's Thank even you, too grace for you to be given a lecturing job. Yes, sir. It's because there is no way they could deny you. Yes, you are too exceptional. Yes, sir. And you are supposed to be abroad now. Yes, I don't know what has kept yes, you down. Sir. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. You are not supposed to be here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But somebody carried your issue and put it under the table. You see, you see what we are talking about? That you carry a man's destiny see let me say it i'm praying to you from my heart that in the name of jesus whatever belongs to you and has been hijacked by the wicked hearts of men it must be released this night it must be released this night sir please stand up what's your department Sorry, sir. Political science, can I pray for you? Yes, sir. You will know that there is a God in heaven. Amen. Amen. What do you do, my dear? I'm not doing anything. You are not doing anything? No, sir. I have to pray for you. Yes, sir. Huh? That trip abroad, you must go. Amen. Amen. Because there is an honor and there is a professor that God has destined that you will meet. Amen. And I'm going to pray. Do you believe what I'm saying? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, sir, I pray for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I release you. And I release your destiny. Amen. Both for you and your wife. Amen. I decree and declare. Scale new heights in your profession. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two. There is a friend in your life. And the Lord is telling me to tell you to be careful. There is a friend in your life. Be careful. I won't say more than that. Be careful. What God has joined, let no man put asunder. I'll stop there. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. In Jesus' name. Madam, you have been here for a while. Let's pray. What are you trusting God for? For marriage. Who came from Joss? Joss. Joss. Where did you come from? Madam, where did you come from? Bokos. Huh? Bokos. From Joss. Not state of origin where you came from, that you left it and came. Huh? I want to pray for you. What do you do? I, I, I'm a secretary. You are what? I'm a secretary. You are a secretary? Yes, sir. Come, let me pray for you. One of these days, we'll just trust God and do a night vigil. 
honestly so that we can deal with this issue seriously you may think that time is being wasted until you see what god is turning around in your life all these people came from joss madam say in jesus name in jesus name i will not have what they call that pregnancy that they have to do um, no bridge is bridge or something like that this is what i'm saying I'm not pregnant. all done let me pray for you come you are sick it looks like pregnancy like it's breached this is what i'm saying the pregnancy that looks like it's that will open you up and carry something out where are you coming from joss what did they say is wrong with you um, multiple fibrosis no a man don't feel embarrassed can i talk to you a man used to come in a dream huh yes, and sleep with you yes, sir. is that true yes, sir. that's what brought this pregnancy I'm a man of God. Don't be af afraid. You, you heard the story I told you now. Yes, sir. Madam, if I'm lying, look at me before the whole world and say I'm a liar. That you go to bed and a man comes and all of a sudden this started coming. Of course, medically, you would think that, okay, you check it. There is nothing there. Yet the pregnancy will not go. How long has this thing been? Three years. Three years. Don't cry. Don't cry. Who did you come with? May this place remain a place of solutions. Was it not the fallen angels that met with the daughters of men and they became pregnant physically? And had strange go and listen to my teaching the mystery of the serpent and the woman my sister can I pray for you you believe in Jesus look at this adorable lady look at imagine a woman carrying this for three years is that pregnancy it does a human being stay three years in the stomach are you married of course imagine what this this means to her marital life put your hand there father in the name of jesus christ look at this look at what is happening to the woman in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that every seed that has not been planted by god let it be uprooted in this body is it not written that every tree that has not been planted by my father it must be uprooted i uproot this right now in the name of jesus christ i uproot this right now in the name of jesus by a strange mystery may this thing begin to go down and disappear from this woman's body in the name of jesus christ just keep her down there madam let me pray for you what do you want the lord to do for you I'm believing him for a life partner. Life partner. Do you believe God can give you a life partner? Yes, sir. Do you love Jesus? I love Jesus. You are born again. Father, the Bible says male and female, he created them. She's not embarrassed. She's standing sincerely and telling you that I came so that God will bless me with a life partner. I lay my hands upon you and I decree and declare may god bring a responsible man to your life Amen. you will not marry a man that will make your yesterday better than your tomorrow Amen. in the name of jesus christ i declare it so and for all these people standing i pray for them may the lord himself bring miracles over their life Amen. in jesus name i pray i may not have time to minister to all of you one by one please forgive me huh coincidentally i'm going to just tomorrow I'll be in just Saturday, Sunday. I'm ministering in a conference. I'm excited. I'll be in House on the Rock at Rayfield, Saturday and Sunday. I'm in just. But let me pray for you, all of you who came all the way. My dear, look at me. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. With all your heart? Yes, sir. I drive the boy. That the devil wants to bring to your life say amen amen 
you you may not understand what i'm saying but let me repeat myself i drive i didn't say god drove him in the name of jesus christ as one who loves you well i drive any irresponsible boy that is coming in the name of prayer warrior to destroy your life amen in the name of jesus i'm amen. not looking down it is god's will that all men be saved but then i'm telling you that in the name of jesus christ everything that would destroy your destiny let it be far from you amen. by the power of the holy spirit amen. praise the lord for all of you i may not know why you came but let me pray for you in the name of jesus return with your testimonies in the name of jesus return with your testimonies in the name just believe what i'm praying for you in the name of jesus return with your testimonies god bless you please go back to your seat my god can we still pray for the sick how many of you are trusting god for healing let me see your hands out there okay this is what is going to happen it's okay i'm, I'm going to pray for you 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 came you brought them okay i'm going to pray for you now you just relax now please because of time those under the anointing just leave them if there's no usher hold on a lady usher place your hand on that girl any lady usher release her now out in the name of jesus let it come to an end now and forever release her destiny release her family in the name of jesus christ let there be restoration let there be testimonies please this is how we are going to do it because our time is already gone we are going to do three things at the same time please listen number one you are going to be submitting your prayer requests number two those who are trusting god for healing in the various overflows please aside from those that i prayed for for barrenness if your reason of coming here is barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three i want you to come to overflow one i want to pray for you myself aside from that please you are trusting god for a healing miracle i want you to move to your various overflows so those at overflow one move to the front of your projector stand overflow two the same thing overflow three the same thing those by the roadside the roadside down to second equa join overflow two you can join overflow two please ushers protocol pr department coordinate yourself to help them please so that the people know what they are doing praise the lord those in here you can come you can come the lord bless you now there are going to be men and women of god scattered across these various places who are ministering under a corporate anointing make sure you are standing for healing please make sure you are standing for healing no 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 those for fruit of the womb come in please the main auditorium i want to lay hands on you by myself it doesn't matter what overflow you are if it is fruit of the womb please come the main auditorium i want to pray for you now please listen just a touch is enough you don't have to start explaining and telling the men of god this is a problem sometimes god can give them words if they don't don't worry just a touch and you will go back i want you to believe this that's why you came are we together while that is happening if you have your prayer request here you can just wave it and pass it let there be an usher okay um peace is here you can pass it let there be an usher or somebody please um the various departments coordinate yourself so that you are collecting this let's make it fast those online um you can use our social media platforms to submit your requests and we're going to pray on it right now please quickly quickly A Jimmy and a Jimmy and promise will go to overflow one a Jimmy and promise will go to overflow one um, pastor alpha and Benga will go to overflow three 
overflow three. Pastor Femi and Kenny and Ima go to overflow two. Also extend to those by the roadside. Extend to those by the roadside. Did you get? Let me pray for you, Pastor Lawrence. Come. I will pray for you and then you will join those at Overflow 3. In the name of Jesus Christ, grace for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the anointing, let the grace of the Spirit come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, please, worship team, you give us songs of the Spirit while we are ministering. And as soon as hands are laid on you, you can go back rejoicing. Those who are seated, don't be careless, be praying in the spirit because God is solving people's problems while you gather the prayer requests. If you are yet to submit yours, just wave it and there will be someone to reach you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we decree and declare that within the next 10 or so minutes that we have, do a quick walk in the life of your people. In the name of Jesus, do a quick walk in the life of your people. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone will fall under the anointing here. Once that happens, the power of God will start to move to heal. Right here, those in front here. Okay, so I can start praying now. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. Praise the Lord. Please, everyone stand. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Whether you are inside or outside, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that the next dimension of my life opens up now. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Please begin to pray. of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I like you to begin to declare that every request you have written here that by the grace of God this will be the last time you have to visit this issue please pray please pray our time is gone but let's make use of the time Sweet 
stretch your hands here and begin to decree and declare that in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, every request that I've written here by the God of heaven, let this be the last time. Shatakato sebregete kotosh. Impratakato pregeteka. May the Lord arise and solve impossible situations. Arise in the name of Jesus. Are you praying? Father, that these Egyptians that I see today, I see them no more forever. The requests of those localized here and those who have posted their requests on our social media platforms, we declare intervention, we declare breakthrough, we declare increase. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare and we agree as a family of faith that this request will turn into testimonies in your life. We declare that this request turn into supernatural testimonies. The same way I am standing upon them, I decree you stand upon every situation that is represented here in the name of Jesus Christ. I know that they are still praying for a few people, but let me just pray the final prophetic blessing on you because our time is gone. It says, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. I decree and declare, every economic hardship that is bringing the saints to their knees and causing them to compromise, I declare that you are exempted from it now. Every prayerlessness represented in this place that the grace to pray seems to have gone down in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar anybody introduced by the devil into your life or your circle to destroy you I severe you from them right now in Jesus' name. I speak favor over your life. And I declare in the name of Jesus, walk in favor. 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 Therefore, God has exalted him and given him a name. That is above every other name. It says that at the mention of that name, every knee must bow. I declare, whatever must bow in your life from tonight, let it bow right now. Let me pray for you finally. And especially for those of us who are not within this city. If you traveled far and came, I'm praying for you now. In the name that is above all names, to all our visitors and all those who connect with us from far, that includes those from our social media platforms, I decree and declare, whatever the issue of concern is that brought you here, return with the answers now. Return with the answers now. You will not need to tell people you came here. There will be the radiance and the glory of the Spirit upon your life. I declare that every door that has refused to open, even as the Lord kept revealing here, I enforce it and we call that door open now. The new month is the fourth month of the year. The number four stands for balance. That means that whatever is left 
that must be shown in your life. You are blessed here, but not yet blessed here. You are blessed here, but not yet blessed here. I declare completion for you now. May April bring you completion. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain